the story that she told about finding something in my phone. No, me and my coworker that I work with every day. Screenshots. Richard, I, I grabbed his phone. He grabbed mine because we didn't keep case on the phone. We had the same exact. Everybody had the same exact iPhone. I picked his up off the desk, went home. He had some mistress call his phone, and I didn't. I that's when I realized it wasn't my phone. So at that point. I get home. She tell me I went through the phone or whatever because we're not allowed to. We weren't allowed to lock those phones either. Um, everything uh, her if she was ever wrong, anything. She kept talking about a work phone and all this stuff, and I'm like, I, I gotta have two phones for work because I'm not gonna. It's just just my job. The nature of my job. I had to have two phones. Simple as that. Um, she had a password to both of them. Did you just catch that lie? Oh, did y'all just catch that lie? Now, oh, he said she had the password to both of them. And he also when he said, was telling the story, he said they were not allowed to put a password on, on their phones. But when he was talking, I told Nick, I said, it's crazy because Tisa said that she unlocked it with a password. What's, What's up, up y'all? My name is Nick Rochelle. And I am Carla Rochelle, and we are a married couple. On this channel, we share our genuine reactions to some of the hottest content on YouTube. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, make sure you click that subscribe button. And if you want to join the membership to our channel, become one of our little freaks, hit the join button for exclusive perks. Without further ado, shout out to the members of our channel. All right, babe, who are we reacting to today? Simply Wavy. Okay. Today we're reacting to Simply Wavy, y'all. Okay. So <laughs> it says interview with Legion addressing Risa Tisa's Who the Fuck Did I Marry? So we had a lot of people that were reaching out. They were asking, a lot of people were asking us to react to, yes. they want us to sit and listen to Legion live. Y'all was leaving comments on the last video DMs. DMs. yeah so i was like okay we really gonna have to give the people what they want so if y'all want us to listen to him uh bump his hot ass gums for two hours okay we're gonna do it yeah about three hours and, and uh us. we uh got a little casamigos gonna help casamigos to help us get through it then i was planning on it what are you putting into this her car that she was driving at the time was trash what happens if I lose my job? I get sick. I get this. I get that. You spend money every day. You step out the door. He's telling the family that I stole his money. I'm trying to be financially smart because you just go out and spend and spend and spend and, and you only putting a quarter back. She said one thing you need to know about Legion. She said whatever he tells you, it is a lie. Mm. That's not it. You know, and she did it for likes. I thought I knew, but I truly had no idea who the fuck I married. Today's a very special day. I'm here with a guy who over the last week has grown extremely popular on social media, but not for a very favorable reason. I'm going to go in order from the time we met until the time I got our divorce decree in the mail. Hi, uh, my name is Jerome McCoy. Uh, Y'all been saying Legion or what name that Teresa decided to give me, whatever. I'm only here honestly because I didn't see the stories until like, part 20 and a good friend hit me up and was like hey it's your ex-wife and she on here you know she bashing you or whatnot and i didn't know nothing about it i literally still haven't watched a lot of it i just paid attention to like the footnote somebody like watched the whole thing and gave me like a micro guys of what she was saying. are we noticing some common some commonality some common shit here with liars think about grams what she said i never watched it Think about uh, the MW, I ain't watch it, but then be able to quote everything that didn't happen to the video. Jerome McComb McCory, I ain't watched it. Somebody told me about it. Right, but the thing is, he said he didn't watch it until part 20 and then turned around and said he didn't watch it. Yes, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, why do they always do this? Act like they didn't watch it when it was about you. You love the attention. You watch every minute and you watch reaction videos. You're probably watching us now. Ask Thanky. <laughs> because they knew it wasn't true. And then I just, I honestly wasn't going to respond. Nobody said anything to me. Um, only when I got family members getting harassed, um, you know, my god mom at work and people coming up to her and then my niece couldn't go to school because of it. Got another niece that uh, had to move out of Atlanta. And her parent, She came back home, her and her mom, because of all this. So for me, when I heard about it, I was going to ignore it. If his family don't fuck with him, 
How do anybody know who your niece is, who your godmama is? Because we ain't even heard no story about the godmama. But who we did hear something about was who? The mama's friend who was supposed to be his auntie. I don't remember hearing nothing about a godmama. I feel ignored because it didn't bother me. But then I heard the unfortunate story about the gentleman with the same name, um, his house being... Um, vandalized and then people harassing him and then another gentleman with the same name uh i think that uh I, i'm not mistaken i think somebody had wrote like took a they took a shot at him um so for that reason i said all right let me come put a stop to some of this some of the people i went to school with good friends of mine got been getting harassed and i got friends of mine getting harassed i got my brother you know uh he had to make a statement for his job um, and even I had to go to workplace and make statement and find out what was going on and then get legally covered before I jump on camera, start talking loose like some people doing. A lot of things had to come in place for me to jump on here. And then the funny part in between that, I see ex-girlfriends that I ain't talked to in forever, ex-wife that I ain't, I mean, and it's crazy because I'm like, what? When he told me this, I was in the kitchen laughing. Allegedly, your ex-wife came out and did a 50 part series on TikTok about what transpired in y'all's relationship and all the horror stories and all these things that she felt like, um, you know, she needed to come out and say. First things first, I just wanted to ask, you know, explain the conditions and, and, and how you guys met about the apartment, studio apartment, uh, the money situation and the job. I met her, um, I was doing a work thing and um, after work, everybody wanted to get together to eat. I mean, we we had like one of the most stressful weeks at my job that we could possibly have. Um, As a VP. So we all was like Cheesecake Factory. You in Atlanta, you know anything about Atlanta? Everybody go Cheesecake Factory. Me, it's my favorite restaurant. Don't eat there too much. You're going to get fat. But I mean, it's a good place to eat. We all went there um, to eat, honestly. Um, I was there. Um, she was there with two of her roommates. Um, nice. We met. She seemed honestly like a really nice girl. Um, nice lady, honestly. Very funny. Um, really smart. Um, we exchanged numbers and we decided to meet back there a week later. The next week, I actually could not meet her back there because, again, I had work. Um, uh, then the week after that, she called me up. Um, we was like, Cheesecake Factory, cool. So um, I was on my way to meet her there. She called me on the phone, said that she had a problem with her tire. Um, as to what was going on, she said she had a piece of metal in her or something. She put some air in it and was on the way and was going to meet me. Um, then she called me like 20 minutes later, said she couldn't do it. She couldn't meet me because of the tire and she needed help. I heard a boom and I lost control of my car. Did not crash, but my tire blew out. I said, you know, I got to get this fixed. I don't know what to do. Like I'm a damsel in distress kind of thing. Um, she didn't have roadside assistance or anything like that. So I was like, all right, cool. Um, And I was just going to go and be done with it. But something in me said, hey, don't lead a woman on the side of the road. Like my dad was real big on, you know, you can help, help. So I was like, all right, cool. Um, Tell me where you at. Send me your location. Boom. She sent me location. Long story short, I went, helped her get her tire fixed. Um, went to a tire place. Guy I know, um, know and love. He fixed the tire. Really didn't charge me much of anything. I paid for the tire. Um, and we ended up going to dinner after that. Um, we talked, hit it off. Um, and we ended up spending almost 24 hours together just talking. Really. Um, she, she interests me because she is like highly intelligent. Um, Teresa, um, not not stupid by any means. So that's how I got started, honestly. Um, she was very open. Um, and I was very open about what was going on with me, which was nothing, but I just worked way too much at that time. I was working way too much as anybody, you know, you, you just trying to make money back then. My motivation was I just want to make as much money as possible. I had nothing to tie me into anything other than just, you know, get some money. We both had established we were dating for marriage. It was just, it was a good vibe. We sat in his car and he played this song for me by John Legend. John Legend was talking about, I think I met my wife tonight. And I thought it was a sign. So I was like, oh my God. That was how I got started. After a couple of weeks of talking on the phone, dating, um, again, she grew on me as any relationship you like somebody. Um, 
uh, she came to the studio apartment a couple of times. I had been to her house a couple of times. Now, friends of mine that uh, I work with, uh, we talked about her and they advised me, hey, this Atlanta, be careful because you're making this money, you're doing your thing, you don't want to end up uh, just in a situation where you end up paying for stuff and doing stuff. I was raised where, man, you try to take care of your woman best you can do. I mean, uh, I'm a car guy. I love cars. So for me, you know, if she had a problem with her car, I help her. And over the coming weeks, she had a lot of problems with the, the Nissan Rogue she was driving. So I help out. Ooh, he does. I wasn't going to have her. I even drove her car to work place. a couple of days just to get some stuff fixed on it because I know guys that work on cars and I know a lot. Yeah, it is like he's speaking sign language or something yeah, like he's he, body. He, he twitching, like, he's looking. Like why he just can't sit there and talk? You think he's just nervous? Or you think he just I mean, lying? Both. Just to get that situation in a better position. Then, you know, the relationship grew. Um, and then the pandemic hit. But everything was going great. The issue was where are we going to quarantine? When he came to my house, I had a three bedroom, two and a half bath townhome. He was in a studio. I was like, he kept t okay. telling me like, this is temporary because I'm looking for a house. Like he showed me the email from a woman who worked at the company. She was putting him in contact with a realtor to help him find a townhome or a single family house. So the apartment is just the apartment I lived in during the week during work. I lived other side of Atlanta. So for me going to the house, this was five minutes versus driving an hour and 10 minutes with traffic to my house. So you already had a house? Yeah. So that wasn't mentioned in the story. I don't know if you know that, but yeah, I know. Oh yeah, she said that all you had was the, the studio apartment. <laughs> so you had a house and a studio apartment. Yep, stay in the studio apartment through the see, week. Hold on, it's just little things like that. Did you see? She he the man said, I don't know if you know that they didn't mention about your house in the story. And he said, Yeah, I know. He said it with so much confidence. How? Because he watched those videos. Plan is horrible and trying to get home and get back and wearing out. I'm basically I'm wearing myself out in the afternoon getting off work. And I'm, I'm in the car for two hours. Where a studio apartment, 15 minutes. She lived in Riverdale. I lived, I actually lived in Douglasville. But the job was in, uh, what is that? Um, uh, like Duluth area. So if you look, look on the map, Duluth and Douglasville is far and Clayton County, Riverdale is farther. So it's just, it was easier for me to get this studio apartment be there during the week because I would be at work sometimes eight o'clock and then having to drive home. I mean, that still don't make sense because then why would he have to show her a letter saying that he was approved for so much for a house, but now he's trying to say he already had a house? That's what I'm saying. Like, I need you to have moments like that. Just keep calling shit like that out. You got to do that with him. Home, get up, make that drive. And if you're new and here, then, if you're new here, Carla's uh, memory is like freak freakishly good i mean but look at his background right now i mean this is like an oldest person house that he's at right now so if you had a house and a studio <laughs> why is you living like somebody older oh uh, let's see the condiment factory in duluth georgia it seems like a lot of people is k barbecue factory that's a condiment Seems like a lot of people maybe uh, search this on Google, but okay. The studio apartment and a couple of people that work with me, we all did the same thing. Look, we all running out of this eye. building because it was easier for a lot of us. I did not realize inviting him to my home um, probably made his eyes go, oh shit, she's a keeper. She got this three bedroom, two and a half bath townhouse and I'm in like a little studio. Yeah, let me, let me let me go ahead and pursue this. What I need to do to quarantine here. Because I heard in the story where she said that we See? quarantined together. He just said, I heard in the story that she said. He going to tell on himself throughout this entire video, guys. Together during the pandemic. And I need to clear that up because during the pandemic, like we're Zooming and we FaceTime. That's I, I got her into getting using Apple products, iPhone, and we FaceTime during the pandemic. 
Um, she worked from home. I still had to get up and go to work. And because people at my job were coming down with COVID left and right, I didn't think it was a good idea for us to They're gonna lie. physically see each other because COVID in Atlanta was horrible. The city was shut down. I'm not an essential worker, so our job had to apply for us to be able to be out in the morning. So I would have to get up in the morning time, go to work, and come home. Um, I don't want to be around somebody. And I'm around people all day long. They've been out in the community moving around. So if I got sick, I'm going to get her sick. So during the pandemic, when she said that we we were together, yeah, we were talking, we were boyfriend and girlfriend, but we were not in the same house together. Um, it was almost five and a half months that I didn't physically see her. I saw her like I'm seeing you. I didn't spend any time in that house with her. Oh, be- you lying, dirty dog. What happened Yeah, there, so, but look, anytime, usually a lot of times, like when people are lying, they tend to get like these itches or it's like, it ain't even an itch. It's just like, because they lying, they do certain stuff. It's and like I've, they... I've tested that myself because I was like, let me lie and see what happened. And then so it just got itchy all of a sudden. <laughs> So it does happen for whatever reason. So I don't lie like that, but go ahead. Yeah, but my thing is, he said <laughs> he was talking to her on Zoom. So how did she get pregnant two months later? If y'all was talking on Zoom for five months. And all it's going to take is for her to prove that she was pregnant. All she got to do is just show some type of paperwork to show she was pregnant. And that's going to be him getting caught up in another motherfucking lie. I didn't want to get her sick. If I got sick. So but you fucked up. Quarantine together then. No. I didn't want to quarantine by myself. So he moved in. We talked about the bills. Let me clear something up that I said in the other video where I said he paid all the bills. He paid all the household bills. He did not pay my car payment, my cell phone, or my car insurance. He paid the rent because my rent at the time was less than a thousand dollars. When he's telling me that he's a regional manager. I was like, wow, okay, so you got money. Yeah, this BP was, uh, I'm sorry, VP was really balling because he's paying, what, his mortgage at his house. He paying his little apartment his uh, that's studio. close to his job. And he paying her rent as well at her apartment. He a motherfucker. Oh, man. my goodness, God. Y'all, we didn't reach out our shot glasses. It say bad decisions make great stories. And mine say bottoms up, New Orleans with a big fat ass on it. So when you first met her, do you feel like it started off about money? No, absolutely not. I was gonna say because like when you were talking about the job and everything like that, did with you know it was just just casual conversation. It wasn't like, hey, look, you know, I got all these big things coming up, and this is what my situation is now. But this is what it's gonna be. You don't think that like none of that played into y'all's relationship at first? No, I mean. I told her in the beginning, my job was demanding at times, and it was. Um, and then I did charity work on top of it. And it was something that I wanted to do. Um, Shift my grandfather used to do it, and he got me into it. Um, a guy that, two, two gentlemen that are not my brothers, but I call them my brothers. A long time ago, both of them like just looked out for me, and because when my father died, uh, they just stepped in like father figures, but they were like big brothers to me. I, and, and they did some of the same charity work. So I just wanted to lend a hand and help them help people. And it was, it's just something good to do. Ain't nothing better than helping people who need it. I am not, this is where it's not gonna make me look good, but it's the truth. It was intoxicating to not have to worry financially about how to pay the bills. It was a wonderful feeling. And so, I kind of pushed to the side the fact that, yeah, you shacking up because it's like, but your page, you don't have to worry right now. Like he's, he's taking care of all of April's bills before April even comes. Cause this was still March. And then we have a conversation about house. Was there a turning point in this situation? Like was, you know, was there a certain point where you were like, okay, I'm, I'm noticing she's starting to be on, on edge about stuff. I, I told her in the beginning um, pretty much everything about me. And I told her there's certain things I wasn't going to discuss with her because I felt like as a girlfriend, not your business. How much money I make, not your business. Um, 
my exact finance is not your business. She knew for a fact I had money because again, I bought dinner. I did everything. The first time we went out, yeah, she paid for hers. I paid for mine. After that, she didn't buy another meal. For the for the whole time y'all were dating? Yeah. No, never again. Never paid for food again. Never. Um, and that's fine because kind of guy I I am essentially. I don't if I ask you on a date. That's the type of guy you need to be when you shooting out all these motherfucking lies. <laughs> Obviously, I'm paying. That's how I feel. I know somebody gonna be like, "No, man, I'm I'm cutting it down the middle." No, honestly, if I ask you out, then I'm I have full intention of I'm taking care of dinner. One of the reasons I did pay for everything, other than that, is she had told me about her job, um, her financial situation with student loans. Um, she was very open because she told me about the Nissan Rogue that she was driving. She actually showed me the loan paperwork. Um, and I look, I read over it um, and I saw that, you know, she was paying a very high interest rate on a truck that really wasn't worth it. I mean, she was getting paid. She was paying three times what the truck was worth. Um, not to mention paying student loans, getting up, going to work every day. Um, and actually, like some of the supplies for her job, she was buying herself. This is when he showed me a letter from Chase with the Chase logo at the top stating that he had been approved for a mortgage for excuse me for a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar mortgage or a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar house so he was like we can't go over 750 and i said i remember asking him can you afford the mortgage on a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar house because i know i can this is when he explains to me I told you how I played arena football. I invested my money really well. You know, what was going on with the housing situation? With the cash offer? Like, did you know, what was the proof of finance? I, I told her we she wanted, because like I said, she knew about my house and then hers. She wanted to, and this is after, this is after we got married. And again, this is April 2020. This is before we got married. So at the time, he was my boyfriend. His whole attitude was, you know, you're gonna be my wife, happy wife, happy life. And the home was listed, I believe, roughly 400 and something thousand. He's telling me he put an offer in. I need to clarify some things he told me and the things that I actually saw. She wanted to um, get a house that we both could live in together. I told her, we looked at her credit, we looked at mine. When we looked at her credit, it wasn't good. So I talked to a financial advisor I know, and my brother, uh, Miguel, uh, he's not my blood brother, but he, you know, like I told you, he gave me some good advice. He said, listen, bro, you going to, you want to go into a house with this woman, I'm advising you not to do it, but if you're going to do it, she don't have the capital. So what you're going to have to do is it's going to be you. So if you put her on the loan, you're going to pay more. So you might as well just put yourself on there and take care of everything. And you can put her name on the house as just someone living there. So when we talked about it, she agreed to it, but we were still into this, just into this marriage. And I told her, I'm not comfortable with buying a house with you just yet. I'm, I, I, I'll sublease my house out and, you know, we can live, you know, somewhere, or you can do something different. We can figure something out. Um, what she didn't do, and this was the first red flag for me, is she signed a two-year lease at that house in Riverdale, and she didn't tell me anything about it. The only way I found out about it, because I asked her, because it was coming close to the time to renew the lease, and she said, I already signed a two-year uh, lease. Why would you do that? In October, we looked at another house. This house was in Marietta. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, it was gorgeous. I want to say that the house was about... $700,000. I really like the house. I can see myself living there. I can see myself cooking there. Um, and so subsequently, my ex-husband put in an all-cash offer on that house. I watched him put an all-cash offer in on the house. So at that point for me, like I told her, my house, Douglasville, I'm not getting rid of that because for me, um, uh, I just didn't want to, honestly, no, no side story. I just didn't, I just didn't want to. Uh, and I went to her like, well, we can live out here. 
she got an aunt that was living in like Dallas, Georgia. And I'm like, we'll be closer to her if you want to go out there and see your, your little cousin or your grandfather or something like that. So we left the situation up in the air. All this looking at houses, she went and looked at a couple of houses. I looked at two houses where her, um, I like both of them. Both prices were a little needed to be negotiated, but at the time, they wanted to give her a promotion at GSP. And I'm like, why don't you just take the promotion? Because then you can start paying down some of the student loan. Um, we can, I'll help you do that. Let's get your credit up here so that we can go into this house together. Because if I go into it by myself, I don't have a problem doing that, but we got to clean your credit up because we're married. And that means your credit is my credit. So let's get that cleaned up. She wanted to push to get out of that house. And I said, if you want to get out of the house, you moving up here where I'm at. But I, again, buying a house, your credit is not high. It just didn't make sense. Let's get your debt down. Anybody buying a house, you know this. Your credit bad, you ain't buying no house. If your credit good and the person's credit not so good, you're going to pay more because the person on the, on the loan's credit isn't stellar. And I was trying to help her. Yeah, but she had already said that she told you she couldn't afford that and she was perfectly fine with your name being on everything. So what's the problem? Get that together. As far as the loan, what made her look for these high houses for 700,000, 600,000 if she didn't have no credit for that? Um, I didn't tell her to look for a 600, $700,000 house. You can, that's a question for her. I don't know. I, I told her, I don't care if we are in Atlanta. Um, the house that I lived in Douglasville, I got at an auction and I only paid $125,000 for a house that's probably around $210,000, $230,000 house. So $600,000 house, I'm like, I'm not going in with that and your credit like this because we're going to be paying forever or I'm going to be paying forever. But what I'm trying to figure out, so is that is that was the Chase loan like the approval of the seven hundred thousand? Was that a real thing? Or I never, that... I never went to my bank and, and and needed to get approved for a loan. I think the part that, you know, was just kind of unclear is that. Hold up, hold up. Okay. The money was there though. You're saying like the proof of fund, like when you were gonna pay for the house in cash, was that even a thing? I wasn't. I wasn't gonna pay for it in cash. I was gonna go ahead and get a loan and finance the house. I wasn't about to be. Go spend seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars on a six hundred. Hold up, hold up. It's something happened too fast. He said that he would, he didn't have to go to the bank to get a loan, and then so he basically trying to say that Chase letter that she talked about is a lie. Yeah, because then he turned around and said I was gonna go to the bank and get a loan. Right. What just happened? The guy asked him, "Well, were you gonna put in an all cash offer? What happened?" And he said, "No, I was gonna go get a loan." Thousand five hundred. No, on that new, because honestly, I had told her before the budget for finding the house. We don't need to be over three forty. Three. She started looking at houses that high. Was the proof of funds ever a issue? No. Cause I never gave it to the realtor because all we did was look at houses and I didn't commit to anything because again, I told them solely we're just looking right now. And the two realtors that I dealt that we dealt with, they understood that and they were fine. There was a guy and another lady that she kept dealing with outside of me knowing. And then she showed, take me to a house and they showed me and then they wanted all this financial information. And I was like, we haven't discussed this yet. Cause right then you were just looking. Yeah, because we you wake me up on a Saturday and say I got an appointment at twelve thirty. We're gonna go look at this house, and I'm meeting these realtors, and they telling me, "Oh, your wife contacted us, and they, you know, this is that and the third. And I said again, we're not committing to anything yet, and they understood that because I said, right now her credit is here, mine is here. Like I said earlier, I got to get her here. So when we go into this house, because if I go into the house and I'm buying it myself. Can you really say it's your house? You got to help me here. When something didn't sit right, I would verbally record it in the audio diary because I was like, I don't know what it is, but there's something. You said she had access to the account. She said the only thing that she saw was screenshots of like the account. Yeah, access to the two accounts I let her know about. I had five all together, but she had access to them. She had access to those two accounts because I bled money into those accounts paycheck and then I bled money in if needed be. She was able to go to the bank, 
buy what she wanted when she wanted to buy it. He came to me a few days after we started our first counseling session. And he was like, we should get a joint bank account. So now he's suggesting that we're married now. Let's go ahead and get a joint account. I wasn't necessarily against it because I knew that I would still have my own account. I would still have my own savings. So what I countered with was, okay, let's take a look and see what we're working with. Show me your checking. Let's, let's look at each other's accounts. So he shows me his checking account. His checking account available balance was about, it was just over 9,600. Mine's was just over 1,500. So there was a huge disparity in the amounts. I logged into my savings. I showed him how much I had in savings. He logged into, picked up his phone, da, 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 logged into his Chase savings, turned the phone towards me. In the Chase savings, it was roughly about 15. Y'all, let me just say this. <clears throat> and this is taking me back to the whole, if y'all don't know about the Shirley Strawberry situation, y'all need to catch up on this story. I think I was watching Chronicle Speaks. She does a really good job breaking everything down about Ernesto. This right here is dangerous because we now know it was screenshots, Google images that he was showing her. And he's asking her, let's start a joint account. Her thinking she's looking at the right thing, she goes and she shows the money that she have. He could have just wiped her little money out. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's dangerous. It's he like, deceived her to get her to reveal information about herself. Yeah. Towards me. In the Chase savings, it was roughly about 15,000. I also knew that he told me he had a U.S. bank savings and he had an offshore savings. So at this point in time, I asked him, show me the U.S. bank savings, show me the Music, me too choices. loud. And so he kept saying, he was like, there's a lot of money in there. And he was like, and my uncle always taught me, my uncle always told me, you know, just keep your money tight because women can be, I said women, like, we're married. So the family relationship thing um, is another thing that was that was big. Um, she mentioned, you know, getting up every morning, talking to your brother, you know, from her conversation she had with your family, it was like seeming as if these people didn't have any Fuck contact with you. with you. So who was who was on the phone? Um, we're at the point where I've spoken to the female cousin and she gave me the phone number for the older brother. For the purposes of this video, we're going to call him Chris. Chris. I was very nice. I called him. He was gracious. Um, he was willing to answer whatever questions I had. And what he said to me was, he was he said, my brother has always been a liar. He's always been a liar. I explained to him about the phone calls, the fact that Legion would be on the phone for 30, 35 minutes, laughing, talking to Chris, relaying messages from Chris to me and relaying messages from me to Chris. Without missing a beat, Chris says he was never talking to me. Like I told you in the beginning, the two gentlemen that looked out for me, my mom and dad passed away that became brothers to me, which is Elgin and Miguel. These are the guys that I would talk to in the morning time. My brother Elgin is uh, a, he's not, like I say, he's not my blood brother. He just, but he's a pastor. In the morning time, I love to get my day started. Not he give me a word of encouragement. He do to all his, everybody's congregation, just give you something to get your day started. Um, and he would call me in the morning just to help me get my day started. Um, and I needed that. I was working my butt off back then. And if he didn't do that, then I don't know. Like I said, he he cared enough to call, reach out. This man was busy every day. Um, still busy. Um, and he just a hell of a pastor, but at the same time, again, not my blood brother, but he is my brother. Um, and definitely somebody who, if I was ever going through anything, even to this day, reach out and same thing, pray with me all the time and make sure I'm good and not scared to tell me, Hey bro, you wrong. Uh, he gave me marital advice, uh, life advice, spiritual advice and has been a real brother to me him and my uh his his brother miguel which they're you know brothers they're not my blood brothers but they're my brothers if you can understand what i'm saying no be very clear with the statement i'm getting ready to make i called every i reached out to every person i know 
who apparently has had some form of relationship with him. Either he said that they were friends, they talked on the phone, he said they hung out. Um, the brother in Baltimore, I was told, had been to the house while I was at work. Brother in Baltimore said, no, that, that never happened. I've never been to your house. So she was hearing people on the phone because she was saying she didn't hear nobody. You know. Well, it ain't no secret that neither neither cared for her too funny, but they accepted her because I did, because I loved her. So they, they accepted her, but um, neither really wanted a lot to do with her. Why? So, I mean, I'm not, you Why? know, my brothers are, are good dudes, honestly. When I was younger, like I said, they looked out for me. I, I wouldn't have went to college if it wasn't for those two. More so than- So he just completely like deflected and just like flipped it. And now we talking about how they didn't like her and how they helped him with something else. Right, the same way how I don't think he even he really wiggled out answered of it. the question about his family. He He's changed- wiggling out. He's a professional liar. If he's been doing this since he was a child, then you see how good he is. Um, and I can see how he can talk, speak circles around somebody who can't keep up with him. My parents not bad. My, my parents, my parents love me every day and they were definitely instrumental in me going to school. But these two shot me and cursed throughout college. Don't quit. Keep studying. You did your homework. What's up? Don't be in the club at nighttime. You go to the club, I'm gonna come kick. See, with somebody like him, you gotta have everybody together where he don't have, you again, that cage, I said you got to put him in, yeah. where he don't have room to lie. Because yeah. then the guy who he's claiming that he talked to every morning, he'll be able to like, bro, that was, I wasn't on the phone with you in the morning. Yeah, like, but, what you talk about? But not only that, sometimes when people lie so much, um, it's kind of like what Risa said. <laughs> it, it got to the point she was laughing, but sometimes people get to the point, they like, I don't even care enough to try to keep up with this fucking story because mm -hmm. I know that it's a lie. And we'll literally show up ready to beat the hell out of me if I got outside Why are of we getting this story? doing what I'm supposed to do. I think the knee, the issue with his knee was a symptom that was not some football injury that was not, um, oh, I hit it at work. It wasn't that. Something else was going on. I had kept asking him to, you know, let me know when you have a doctor's appointment. I'm going to go with you. I'm going to go with you. And um, he just kept saying the doctor, to, he's, he's calling the doctor, and the doctor told him to just keep icing the knee. But I knew better. What was, what was wrong with your knee? Nothing. Never happened. So you never had a knee injury? It was never? Oh. Wow. Did you have any incident at work at all that, that would cause that lie? I'm trying to figure out where that would even stem from. Uh, no, nothing. Um, the only thing even close to that is uh, we got a little snow in Atlanta and uh, I slipped and bruised my elbow. Not no knee, nothing limping, close? nothing. I walked just fine. My girlfriend will tell you that. I, I don't like never had an injury with knees at all until I was in a car accident. And that was after her and I were divorced. She had mentioned <clears throat> about the knee because she was saying maybe it had stemmed from football. And then she had mentioned that, hey, the football career, you know, was never a thing. Like she she could never find any, you know, trace of that type of stuff. Is that, you know, were you in the arena league or what did you tell her? Because, you know, it was stories about NFL, arena league. What, what league were you in? Went to college. Played. Where? Um, and then, uh, I went to college a little late because my parents didn't have the money. So I got a partial, went out San Diego, um, arena football for a couple of years. And then I just got a real job. That's it. Basically. What do you mean you got a <laughs> As simple as that. It was nothing, wasn't nothing stellar. Um, yeah, but she, that's like, okay, what, oh, I like, need this football guy. Football like not a Sorry, right, I need this guy to ask, okay, what team did you play with? Like, so we can maybe Google, look this shit up. Because if you play, I don't know what the fuck arena football is, but it seemed like something that's Googleable where I can look it up and see pictures of his big ass with other big ass men. No, because he said he was what type of student? I don't give um, a fuck if you're playing arena. To yeah. be 
like basically where he's not but, searchable. And, which, and this is another common thing that you're noticing with these liars. Again, remember the person that we exposed. She made her videos and her videos, she talking about all her past life and all this and all that. Bitch, we focus on the, the topic. Yeah. I need him to do that too. What team did you play for? Where can we look this shit up at? What school did you go to? Well, baby, you keep talking about the person we exposed, but you're not telling them the video so they can go and watch it for the new people that see Yeah, for the new people here, we recently ex exposed uh, somebody that's very similar to this. Um, and uh, it's the MW. If you look it up on our channel, you'll see that um, where we exposed them. And we have been dealing with them for years. And I had to put them in a cage where it wasn't much that they could really back out of. And that's, again, what you got to do with a person like this. Yeah. A real job, because it is a real job. But I think I did more after that part of my life than I ever did, you know. So you you, you said you went to school in San Diego. You, you lived in California. That was true? Yeah, I was there for school. Okay, because she said she never, she said she did some background research. And, you know, that never popped up that you lived. School out don't. That school, they don't give, they don't give you any student information. The reason they don't, um, I, I think it's 2003, somebody went looking for somebody at the college and they weren't there, but they gave information to, for the person and the person ended up getting killed. So the student policy is very strict. Now, this is something that we should be able to Google and find out. It should be a news story on this. Comment below your thoughts on what he just said. And we were told about that before Before I graduated, student policy was changed. And it's very, very strict. If you are not alum, they're not going to. It's just their student policy is to keep. Well, why he getting the information? Basically, to us? keep everybody safe, keep people from getting, not having shootings on campus. San Diego State is a place where they push your education. They may not be big on sports all the time, but they want you to. Yeah, grow, eagling. progress. Um, and I everybody I know, I went to school out there, right Jennifer, Henry, my friends, like we all have done well because of what they taught us there. Mm -hmm. But San Diego State, yeah, but everybody I went to college with, yeah, they, they the funny part about Look, the whole stuff, what I noticed about him, he, he kind of do what I do when I know somebody lying to me. He got that look on his face like, mm -hmm, yeah. But it's like you could tell that he know, like, nigga, you full of he shit. He don't believe him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the story, I heard I heard more from them, like, because a lot of them at the time, well, hey, well, I told you not to marry that girl. From but, um, yeah, I, she knew about it. She saw highlights, student pictures. Um, me on okay, all kind of stuff, but again, anything like Teresa's thing is anything to defame me, anything to make me look horrible. Yeah, I mean, I think she took everybody for a ride because she got paid from TikTok, she got cash at from people who sent her money, people sent her on trips, all this other stuff. And now, this other woman has come out and come forward and talk about how she took this story, and people have reached out and spoke to me. And now they find out she lied. Now, you know, again, she'll probably make a video after this video and say, oh, he lied again. That's fine, too. The only reason, like I said in the beginning of this video, I came here, I want people to leave my family alone, people I love alone. So the only reason that is like a, a, a big uh, part of the story is because she said that you mentioned you were able to save up a lot of money from the arena football and I did. able to start your life. Okay. Yeah, I did. I did. I, I I I rode the bench proudly for that paycheck, and and was able to finish paying paying for a little bit. I owe for school. Um, I was able to buy a very nice car, um, very nice house, and and start my life off great. I mean, when you don't try to spend your money, like you'd be amazed. Like, man, I used to shop for groceries in a dollar store out in California, like the Dollar Tree. Like I used to go there, I would go to like save a lot. I would do whatever I need to do to save that money because any day in arena football might be your last day. And you it's not the same. The contract's not set up the same, none of that. So again, I did the smart thing and save the money. And these two gentlemen I told you about before, save your money, save your money, save your money. And they were very instrumental in telling me that my father was still alive. So my father would be like, yeah, save your money, you know, cause tomorrow ain't promised to you. So make sure that you got something to fall back on because when it's over, it's over, you know? And for me, I, I, 
I probably still could have played, but I kind of outgrew it. I got tired of the hustle and bustle of it all. And How? I was more. How have you was riding the bench? How? I became Stop more up. of a fan than the athlete. And at that point, it was time to do something else. And I did. You said she's seen highlights and stuff like that from San Diego. Is that um, is that something you can um you can share as far as like highlight or a picture of something that you play? Because she's basically saying, hey, that never even happened. So by this point, we're moving into May of 2021. Things are starting to reopen. One of the things that reopened was San Diego State. There was um, instructions on how to request a transcript. Um, I was able to try to request it online. You needed the person's, the student's name, and I believe you also need their social. And when I typed it in, it said no results found. I asked Legion, what's the deal about San Diego State? He was like, what are you talking about? And I said, um, why is there no records of you there? <laughs> I just came right out and said it. Without missing a beat, this man said, well, I was a private citizen. Privacy. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? A lot of people and I, I'm and I was asked not to because this has brought a negative light on the school. People who I go did. there brought negative light on people I work with. Now, my brother, his job, my other brother, his job, my family, my aunts, my uncles, cousins, nieces, nephews, children, everybody. So what about what about the arena league? Do you have like a picture or something from there that Yes, bring it back. I, I told you before, when I talked to the owner of the team, he asked me, hey, because you got fans returning tickets because of this stuff with Teresa. Oh, God. Yeah, okay, y'all see how he, just, <laughs> how he just flipped it again, deflected like that again. Like, just watch this guy, man. Oof. I'm not going to stop another football player from eating. I was asked not to, and then legally. So you mean to tell me the all same this stuff? Coach there. But just think about all the fucked up shit that these football players have gotten accused of. They don't hide the roster of the other football players or none of that. It's like when it's out there, it's out there. Well, they, and it, maybe they ain't private citizens. I had to sign paperwork that I wouldn't. What like disclose like the teams you were on? I was asked not to. because you you had people. It wouldn't have gotten that far, but I, you had people, and as it was told to me, you got people who jumped on and said, "Oh, it's going to be a Tubi movie. Oh, it's going to be it's going to be Netflix. It's going to be this. It's going to be that." And that's not true. But the point is, you got people, you got owners of a team. I'm not going to be portrayed in a bad light. And they don't want to be. You see what I'm saying? Cause that means they got to answer questions. And but how are the owners going to be portrayed in a bad light? Right. What? That's a good point. It's like how the owners gonna be portrayed in the bad light because there's no negative it, it, connotation it, surrounding the football team. Right. It's just trying to prove if he played for their football team yeah. in San Diego, if he was ever there. It's just a way to prove that he was there. That has nothing to do with the negative about the team. Exactly. It's just was he enrolled? Because everybody usually get their school transcript. Everybody can get that. So he's telling me because he a private citizen, even he can't get that. Now I'm gonna tell you something right now, um, Legion. Like even if Risa Tisa come and make another video, I'm gonna tell you right now, she gonna hem that ass up and she gonna have her proof. Especially for everything that when it come down to her, like I said, that whole pregnancy thing or the fact that you was staying with her or even she could probably prove that you was giving her money to pay her bills. Cause if you ain't staying there, why the fuck would you give her money to pay her bills? I, again, it took me so long to do a response video because I had people come to me and say, not no, just you, some other people say to me, fucking lie. Hey, let me, let me get your side of the story, but they weren't credible. A digital creator, a digital creator. No, we're not, you know, you're not telling the truth. I had to look you up before we did this to see. I had a cousin offer me to do something, but I'm like, nah, you might be in it for money too. And that's not the case. I'm not here for money. If I make money off this video, okay, but I'm here because again, I, I want my family money. left alone. Money is not my issue. So from that transition, do you like, was it a certain amount that you saved that you would, just, you would disclose or no? No, I'm not going to disclose how much I saved. I saved enough to get the springboard into life because I, after I stopped, I was six months without a job and I was good every day. And I still, and I was able to buy, you know, finish paying off the house out there, 
And I uh did kind of look up like about how much an arena football player get paid out there in Cali. And just correct me if I'm wrong, I did a quick Google search. It said right now they make about thirty five thousand. The highest is in San Jose, maybe about sixty thousand. But if that's now in twenty twenty four, how much was he really making back in what he said two thousand three? playing arena football like how were they even getting paid during that time how much was it fifteen thousand dollars to twenty and you weren't even a player let him tell and you was just sitting on the bench so he was able to buy a car uh pay off his house do all that with little arena football money like that don't sound right to me but comment below uh if if i'm missing something do a lot of stuff on vacation i got a job <laughs> and i enjoy it I enjoyed that job to the point where it, it became a career and I loved it every day. For him to say that he appreciates law enforcement so much, it was obviously a lie because the criminal history showed that he had been arrested for even this. criminal trespassing. He had been arrested for like suspended license, um, suspended registration. But the big thing was impersonating an officer. If you don't know anything about impersonating an officer, it is a felony. Period. Point blank. As sure as Peachtree runs from Bankhead to Buckhead, it is a felony. So, seeing that, seeing what court it was in, um, I did another open records request for the incident report. I wanted to know exactly what the circumstances were, especially given the fact that I worked in law enforcement at the time. What were the circumstances as to how he was arrested for impersonating an officer? So I did an open records request. I got um, the incident report. And I'm tired of saying my jaw hit the floor. But on this one, my jaw hit the fucking floor. Uh, you said that your current girlfriend had did the background check. So the, the weekend jail with the in the story, was that a thing? Um, that was a friend of mine that used my license and he had to do weekend jail, not me. And I took him because he did not have a car. So I would drop him off because the jail he had to go to, you couldn't leave your car. So I would get off work, drive him, drop him off, pick him up Sunday, six o'clock. So that's what. But why you had his papers? <laughs> That don't make sense to me. Why would he give you his papers? Why that just don't make fucking sense to me. Yeah. So you gonna let somebody else use your license, use your information, and this can pop up on you when you have to have a job or get a job. It can interfere with something like that. Now listen to how dumb that sounds. That sounds dumb as hell to me. And so because he used your name, he gave you the papers. How are the papers even helping you out? With the receipts or whatever those things were in the bag, that's from him? Yeah, and that one, that, that one he, he used to come to my house and dry clothes and wash clothes. So and he left his bag. And that, and that was all that was in there was a folder mm. with that stuff. Cause he had to prove that to his job that I can't work weekends and I'm in weekends. Yeah, that's it. Hold on. So he said the friend used his license. Does that mean the friend also looked like him too? Cause surely when they get your license, they check the picture. Girl, so do the friend look like him too? He's a fucking liar. Now he trying to say that was his backpack that was at the house. Yeah, I really hate when people just lie like that. I but, can't stand no But I'm just liars. getting through it though. Um, it's real. This annoying video. As far as the uh, like the impersonating the officer story, um, <laughs> that's something she got. That's something she got. That's something that happened with D, he and she just funny. used that. That's not. That's not me. Never. So did that's that. not you either. Again, this is something she can prove because she paid for the records, y'all. I'm telling you now. Oh, but let me just say this. If he is, like, I know he got mental issues, y'all. But if he's a narcissist, um, I think she mentioned that word. Um, do you think it would be smart for her to come back and do a response knowing that he's kind of probably trying to do this to irritate her? It just depends on how much stress she want in her life. It's like she did her job. It's kind of like us. Once we exposed it, we able to move on with our life. So any lie or any type of bullshit story that that person gives that's on them okay because uh that tashawn guy had said the same thing you know he done been in trouble a few times 
And I was like, what do you mean? Because I had not yet gone online into the court system to see what type of trouble he's been in. And so he explained to me, he was like, just run his, run his criminal history and you'll see it for yourself. He said, because I don't know all the charges, but run his criminal history. There's certain family members immediately that I, I don't deal with. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of people, and they're going to hear this and probably have a problem, but I, I, I don't have to lie. Again, there's a lot of people on my mom's side of the family that I absolutely just don't deal with. You don't mm -hmm. have to lie, but you do. There's some people on my mom's side of the family I do deal with. I got a cousin that called me up, and he was like, I'll do a video with you and help you out. And he really trying to help. Mm -hmm. Like, but he always, he my little cousin, he cool. He always been the same dude. I can tell you from a little kid to a grown man, he always been the same dude. I, I joke and call him Cool Breeze because, I mean, I'm telling you, he can come into a room and, and be, you good? Yeah, you good. And mm -hmm. he just, that kind of family member, if I ever wanted to call him and say anything to him, talk to him, ask him, he always just been that dude. He a married man, love his kids. Um, he a good dude. Like I said, I got nothing against him because he one of the people in my family that he might be younger than me, but I can tell you right now, dude is wise as the old owl. Mm. He know who I'm talking about because we just talked today on the phone and he offered, you know, let me do the video with you. You know, you get this money. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I ain't in it for the money. though. And the way they spinning it, like I'm this horrible person, legion, law, he, he narcissistic, narcissistic. I, I, how many times I'm wrong a day? Like most of the day, <laughs> I'm wrong all day long. I, I let her, like, even though I'm the man in the relationship, I, I allow her to leave because I, I just, I don't know. I I think I'm good at being wrong, but I don't mind because you got somebody to stand beside you that will. And I trust her enough that if I don't know. Who the know, fuck is she, that? His new girlfriend. I, I'm a man who I can admit that I'll fall short somewhere and she'll pick up. She's, she's smarter than me anyway. And I'm good with that. I'm okay with that. As long as one of us know, that's cool. You know, I, I'm going to start calling her Google because stuff I don't know, I just be like, hey. Or Siri. Pulls up. It's only been a week since I last saw him. It has been months since my aunt saw him. Okay. She had no idea of the condition that he was in. Again, I'm telling y'all, when I met him, when he met my family, he was like a size 3X. In just a short span of time for a week, <coughs> he easily could have been in an extra large maybe even a large but was wearing 3x clothes so you you mentioned the need there wasn't an issue so was the losing weight story was that was that a, a real thing um you, that that's going to the gym because you realize you're overweight and you want to be thinner and that was me looking in the mirror boy if you don't shut the fuck up now this pissed me off because clearly she said he lost weight and now he looked like you know he he Ain't big good. again. So you mean to tell me you lost weight and went to the gym and now you just didn't drop the habit and you going back to this 3X again? I think he was sick. Mira not happy what I'm looking at. And then I went to the gym. Like I was at one point like 310. I was like, no. And I started going to the gym after work. There's no... Nothing else but me going to the gym, eating better, eating right. Stop going to McDonald's, uh, <laughs> dodging Krispy Kreme, Mrs. Winter's Chicken down in Atlanta. That like trying to, that's it. But she okay, so th that makes sense. But she she said in the condition that she seen you losing weight was you coming back with the same clothes and not you know smelling like you've been living in the car. Like so, is that was that true or no? Lies. You said that you left, so the so basically you sleeping in the car and everything after you moved out, that was not a real thing? No. I went home. I just, I went to Douglas, I went home. Okay. So the, the behavioral, um, I think she said you went to a behavioral correction uh, hospital or something like that. That wasn't, that wasn't true? Lies. The only thing I did at a behavioral hospital, um, I knew a guy that went there and I helped him get a job. He got out. Um, he knew a friend of a friend of mine, Omar. He asked him for a job. I got him a job. Was this part true then? Her kicking you out on June 2021 on your birthday? No, I was gone a week before that. 
I went home to my house after because the marriage didn't last very long, but it didn't grow because I was still doing the same thing. I was still. Hold on. Did I lightly hear the girl in the background say she cheated? Oh, I don't know. This is common. It didn't grow because I was still doing oh. the same thing. I was still. So you got them dumb, dumb. They always tend to find these dummies. But they're you know, really so good. I don't want to hear her story when she come out. Yeah, That's it's like okay. I'm not and, and let me get in. and let me just say this too because I know there's three sides to every story. There's her side, there's his side, and there's the truth. And I don't feel like Risa Tisa is just like some super de duper angel in my eyes, but. It's like, I just can tell a liar when I listen to one and when I see one. And I can tell when somebody full of shit and he is just full of shit. He's so much full of shit that it just outweighs whatever Risa, the story she told. Yeah, it's like, he's the, really getting on my nerves. But the thing is, you have to think about just like how this woman is believing him, Risa believed him. At my house, coming there on the weekend, there was, no growth on her part. Uh, the finances, there was no growth. Um, I was maintaining the bills in the house. Um, I didn't need her help, but again, I asked her for help because I'm taking care of everything here. By that time, I had bought her another car because that Nissan Rogue just drove me nuts. Um, and she was paying too much, so I got her out of that, which made a lot of stuff easier. Um, and she liked that car. And I was trying to consolidate to show her, hey, this is, you can live well, but you don't have to, um, you don't have to um, spend all this money all the time. Like we, we talked about it and we talked, like I said, we talked about moving into that house, my house. I'm like, I'm trying to show you a better way of living. If you got a wife and you have a better way of living, you're supposed to show her. You're supposed to, the thing is she, she, they offered a promotion. She didn't take it. Um, she started working more and bringing in less. What made her not take it though? What she told me is that her boss was an idiot and she hated him. And that meant that she was going to work closer with him. Hmm. What she told me. At the time that this all happened, I was pregnant. So he felt like, look, we're about to have a baby. I don't want you driving that Nissan Rogue to get you something up. I want to get you something more secure, something new. I really wanted a Kia. <laughs> and he was like, well, let's, let's look at the warranty. This man knew a lot about cars. He knew a lot about the warranty. He knew a lot about the depreciation value. And so he did talk to me a lot about what will we get the most for our money. He really wanted me to get a BMW X5. So he calls Eric. He tells Eric in front of me, hey, I need to transfer $72,526, whatever the amount was, because I'm buying a car for my fiance. So he said, okay, well, let me call them back and change the delivery date. Can you be home or can you t do a half day? So he's asking me, can you work a half day so that they can deliver the car and, you'll, and you will be home for it? He told me the car would be delivered between the hours of one and three. <sighs> you did get a car. Didn't she get a car? I'm just saying, so I mean, if it's a promise, then I, that sounds like I kept my promise, not trying to be mean or anything. You got a car. Now the car she wanted, no, because you're not, you're not helping me out here in that, I'm going to make it affordable for myself. And there's no disrespect to nobody driving a Nissan, uh, uh, Nissan Ultima because the 2020 and on above, they're very nice cars. Um, she had everything, Apple CarPlay, everything, all wheel drive. I mean, auto start, everything. Um, but I'm not buying, you know, BMW and your credit stinks. And I'm trying to get you out of debt. Cause if I, if you're in debt and we're married, that means we're in debt. So I'm trying to get you out of this hole so financially, you can be stable. You can't help me if you work in a job and you're making thirty-three thousand dollars a year, and I'm making ninety-six. It's, it's a big old difference here. So at the end of the day, I'm trying to get you. When they offer her the promotion, like I said, why didn't you take it? I found out later why she didn't take it because you were spending extra time with this dude. 
So was the was the BMW ever mm-hmm. talked about? Did you ever promise her like a, a better car or a more expensive car? I told her all the features that she were talking about. I said you will fit better in a BMW. But I said the challenge about putting you in a BMW is and trying to teach her something is you got to work for it. You know, what? I'm not going to just give you an eighty thousand dollar car. Cause I'm your husband and, and you deserve it. I understand that part, but you got to learn the value of a buck. You can't, we just can't go out here all the time. I you got to understand the value of something. And then you, you don't want to work for it. So help me help you. Cause right now at this point, I'm taking care of all these bills here. I'm taking care of, help me help you. How do we do that? How do we come together and bring these finances together? Now, the only part of that story that she told that was true, did I hide money from her? Yeah, I did. I absolutely did. Over 50% of what I was worth, I hid from her. I did. And were those in the offshore accounts and stuff like that? Yes. So is it, did you do that because you felt like she wasn't finan- or financially um, smart with what she, what she had? And That's the main reason. I'm going to say this for any man that's going to watch this. When you get married, you do not need to financially. You need to tell her about all your finances. I'm telling you that now that I, that wasn't right on my part. Uh, my reasoning is my reasoning. And I'm not saying it was right. I think it was, I think it was wrong and I should have disclosed it to her, but we're talking about somebody that I got married to. Um, you had about $401 in the bank account. You had credit card debt, student loan debt, and you paying 550 bucks a month for a 2009 Nissan Rogue with 250,000 miles on it. Like she wasn't making financial smart decisions when I met her. I was trying to help out. Taking care of the bills is this way to stress off of her. The only bill I actually gave her to do is, hey, you take care of the grocery bill, you pay your cell phone bill, and you pay your car insurance. The rest of your money you put in your pocket, do what you got to do with it, I'll take care of the rest. But you need to take care of these student loans. This is why I did that. You need to take care of these student loans to bring your credit up so this way we can be a team when it comes to stuff like that. But again, like I said, I don't want to get nobody... Make the mistake. I'm not saying that, hey, me telling, not telling her about all the money is the right thing to do. That was absolutely wrong. But at the time, I wasn't trying to jump down the rabbit hole of being in her debt. This is not someone that you forget. This is not a situation that, you know, man, I don't, I don't even remember him. No. What I don't remember is the version of myself before I met him nothing so far has turned out to be true. The only thing that Chris was able to tell me is true is that number one, yes, there is a brother in Philly, him. Yes, there is a brother in Nashville, the twin. Yes, both parents are deceased. That is what I was told from the beginning. Those pieces of information are true. And the uncle, he said, which uncle is he talking about? Because if you guys remember, Back in one of the parts, I talk about where he said his uncle was giving him advice on why he should not open up his um, his uh, savings account to let me see it. He would not let me see it. And so I'm telling Chris about the uncle. And he was like, that uncle been dead for years. I told him about Junebug. He said, Junebug been dead for years. And I said, Chris... He was having conversations with Junebug on the phone in front of me. He was like, it wasn't Junebug. What's the whole ordeal with Junebug? Who? Uh, They were mentioning Junebug, and that was somebody you frequently talked to, and she was saying, man, ain't that crazy what happened to Junebug? As if, like, he had passed away. I don't know who the heck that is. I don't know nothing about that. The only person that passed away is a friend of mine. Um, His name is Eric. Um... He was in a car accident. Junebug was supposed to be family. No, I don't know why my family called Junebug. <laughs> um, Eric was a friend of mine who was in an accident. Well, um, need to hear he this. went through a rough time. He was a military guy. PTSD <laughs> bothered him. Me and a lot of people that knew him, we tried to get him help. Um, he drunk a lot. And um, Why do we need this story? He asked about Junebug. That's it. Well, now he got drunk and he just off the road um fatal car accident um 
We probably can't find. I went to St. Louis to bury him with a lot of friends of mine. Um, She knew about that. Um, Yeah, excuse me on that one. That's a really good friend of mine. Uh, He, somebody that uh, I, I gotta say, if I had to say best friend, he was one of them. He, um. Real supportive dude. He had a rough life, honestly. Um, you got this bad up. Alcohol. I have been dying, dying to go to London and Paris. This is something, if you know me, you know she wants to see Paris. She wants to see London. So I get home from work. This is the beginning of March. I get home from work and on the counter, is a folder with like a little bow on it and i'm like oh what is this is this like mail like was this something that you got at work he's like nah it's a surprise for you i open up the folder inside the folder is like a trip itinerary it is not an actual booked trip it's it's like an itinerary a trip for two to go from atlanta to london so what about the london trip was the london trip ever promised I never said nothing to her about going to London. Y'all never talked about going on a trip? Y'all never talked about going out the country or anything? Uh, Savannah. Dad, Back to Philly to see country. family. Never say anything about going out of the country. So where you where you think she's getting these these things from then? Well, um, I read the story that the lady put up about her husband and I'm, I'm, I'm getting the, the word that and now that Teresa copied a lot of this story from this woman's story. But as far as her and I discussed, we never discussed it. Not once. Where is she getting it from? Your guess is as good as mine. Or just to make her story sound better, I guess. Because that's all I can that's all I can gather because we never had those discussions. So when we got married, the first two weeks, like I said, was fine. And then it's as if something snapped. Totally acceptable before. Suddenly, little comments were made. Why are you wearing that to work? You get off at 3.30, so you'll be home by 5, right? Things that had never happened before. He had never questioned what time I'm going to be home. When I'm off work, I, I leave. So, you know, he would call me every day from work and I'm going to demonstrate how those phone calls went but he would call me every day from work and if he even so much as heard a male voice in the background he would have little comments to me who was that are they in your office you know man you know I never know who's who's around you it seems like every time I call you um, there's some man around someone's wife approached me one of her coworkers' wives approached me. I had just come, went to her job to take her to lunch. We went to lunch, dropped, went back, dropped her off, went on about my day. Um, I was in the parking lot of her job. A woman approached me, asked, she said she needed to talk to me. And at first I was like, who are you? What you want? Um, she kind of told me a little bit and she said, you want to, you really want to talk to me. I did follow her out of the there because they worked at like it's a complex for Georgia State Patrol. Follow her out of the complex, follow her to a Burger King. Oh, um, we sat in the Burger King. She broke out her phone. She showed me like the teddy bear camera thing. And it's Teresa, her husband, doing they having sex. It's, it's like, and this, this ain't the first time she's been there. This woman's because chronicle, chronicle through all of this. Now, when I found out about it, I didn't say nothing to her. I went on every day for about two weeks. I wrestled with how to how to how to say something to her. So the woman kept reaching out to me. Have you said something? Have you said something? So she said, "I'm not going to wait." So she she blasted her husband. Um, I don't know. I think they got into a fight. I don't know the whole story. All I know is she she put him out, and she called me and said, "I'm on my way over to your to Teresa's house." Excuse me, and. I know they there right now. You best get your ASS there because I'm about to go kick in the door. I go over there. She had not got there yet. I go in the door. I go upstairs. Um, she in there with him. They doing they thing. I just shut the door. I come downstairs. Now I'm mad at this point. And before I could react, 
she the lady comes knocks on the door i open the door she ready to push past me we get to tussling because i'm trying to tell her you can't go upstairs she ready to go upstairs and do something to both of them um we end up i know calming her down he come flying downstairs he come flying out the house he jump in his car and she don't say nothing to me she was like i'm about to get his ass and she just jump in her car and she give chase i don't know what happened with them two Whatever happened with that, I know later on they reconcile and they together and they live in Charlotte. I just, I know that that was the <laughs> end of that relationship <sighs> with Teresa and him. Teresa come downstairs. She said, um, you know, you don't know what you what you seen. And I'm like, well, you came down in the bathroom when you told me you're supposed to be at work. You're not, you're clearly not at work. And I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave. I'm going to just leave. I don't want to do nothing to you. And I don't want to I'm a black man. It's Atlanta. I don't want to, you know, I was angry. Yeah, I was angry. I mean, I was real angry. I mean, I, I flipped over a couch. I mean, cause she kept falling around the house and I said, let me get the hell out of here. I got in my car. I left, took the long way home to 85. I got home and I, I blocked her from my phone, everything. And I just had nothing to say. And I, I went silent on her for two whole weeks. Wow. Two whole um, when weeks. I contacted her again, we met um, in Cobb County. We sat down, we talked. Um, she apologized and I told her, I don't know if I can get with it. At this point, I went down, followed her back to the house. I took a lot of stuff of mine out of the house. The only thing I left in there was a TV um, and some clothes. So you got your belts. We started going to counseling. Um, the first counselor, she didn't like it. She didn't like the lady because the lady told her after about three sessions, the lady was like, well, the calls y'all hear is because you cheated. She tried to say it was because I didn't tell her about money. But the lady was like, well. Hold up, hold up, hold up. One of the reason they went to counseling was because she found him cheating through Facebook Messenger. Mm. So now this whole thing has flipped and now she was fucking a man in the house. Him and this other woman downstairs trying to decide how they gonna interrupt their fucking. That the guy run down and yeah, and he go past both of y'all and get and in hop his in car. his car and then the lady hop in her car and, and now they back they cool. Both of y'all wrong. You wrong for cheating. You wrong for not talking about money. She didn't like that. We got a second counselor because she didn't like this lady. The gentleman it kind of went the same way. She didn't like him. So then we got a third counselor, which is a pastor and his wife that he used to be a coworker of hers. So we started doing like zooms like this because even though COVID was dying down they thought it'd be better if we do we meet like this so i would come over and we would sit down in front of the computer and we would zoom in and we would talk after a couple of i say about three months of this it might have been a little longer but i think it's about three months of this um in in the 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 counseling, it just seems like she wasn't budging. What was she not budging on though? What was her issue? He is in the bed, um, sleep. I get his phone. I ain't gonna lie, I, I got his phone. He had a work phone and he had um, a personal phone. It was the work phone that he had from the condiment company that apparently was never turned in. But he did not wipe the phone, if y'all know what I mean. And I see this would have been text messages. Text messages between him and a woman named Peaches. I'm reading the thread, cause he's knocked out sleep. So I'm in the bathroom with the door locked, reading the thread. Apparently Peaches, there's no nice way to say it. Apparently Peaches was, was a prostitute. In the text messages, she's listing the prices. He asked for a hand job. She told him it would be like $40. He asked how much would it be for oral? Because it was sixteen eighty. dollars One was the price with the condom, one was the price without one. The story that she told about finding something in my phone, no. Me and my coworker that I work with she every day, Richard, I, I grabbed his phone, he grabbed mine, because we didn't keep case on the phone. We had the same, exact. everybody had the same exact iPhone. I picked his up off the desk, went home he had some mistress call his phone and i didn't i that's when i realized it wasn't my phone so i hit him on his line i said somebody calling your phone and he's like yeah we switched phones i need to come get my phone 
And I was like, well, you can come get it. I give it to you at work tomorrow. So I met him at work the next day. He was like, yo, like, I'm sorry. You know, it's my side chick, whatever. And I'm like, bro, I don't want to know nothing about that. You know, just take your phone. And I just quoted company policy. You know that we're not supposed to use these for personal use. So yeah. because those company phones, you got a different iCloud, but the HR has your that iCloud. So they can see your messages. So at that point, I get home. She tell me I went through the phone or whatever because we're not allowed to. We weren't allowed to lock those phones either. So she went through the phone. I guess he was sending messages to the mistress or whoever, and then she assumed it was me. And I'm like, no, that's him and and whatever. And he actually came over and told her, hey, look, I'm apologize. That's a chick I'm dealing with on the side. Like he explained that. So, so that's the story about peaches, right? Yeah, that's a, that's some chick he was messing with. That's yeah. that. I don't, that's some chick he hold up is this are they kind of getting that mixed up because it was two instances it was one where he was facebook messaging a woman and he was saying when you gonna come get this dick and she was like when you come get this pussy that type thing mm -hmm. that was the initial reason they went to the marriage counseling mm -hmm. this prostitute this shit happened like afterwards where she was already over it she mm -hmm. didn't even care at this point where he was getting paid he was paying for sex so I think that's two different situations. They kind of got them mixed up. Well, I don't think they got them mixed up. I think he was just asking him the question about it. He was messing with. So you got you already talked about that and reconciled that. Yeah, we on, the only reason I had com contact with her is because afterwards, one day I was getting off work and she was in the park lot looking for him. <laughs> and uh, and I just told her like, you gotta get out of here for security show because we had a secure parking lot. And I'm like, you gotta get out of here before they get here. And that, like, that's the only contact I ever had with her. I found out later that she didn't take the promotion because her and the guy that would have cut into the what time they were spending time from? together. Cause she used to tell her mom that I was never home. Uh, I leave the house six o'clock in the morning. I'll be home three, two forty five. So she worked till like three 30. I wouldn't see her till seven 30, eight o'clock at night. She'd be like, I'm at work. Um, it was all signs, but I, I ignored them because she was my wife and I'm just saying she's trying to work hard, but your, your hours didn't match because she would, they, she would get paid and they would give her a stub. Um, they do the direct deposit, but she would get a stub. Now I had access to her account. She had access to the two that I let her know about. So I would see the stub and then hours would add up. And then, you know, you saying you're making more money because you're working hours, but your hours were the same. Her schedule never changed. She didn't do any overtime. She didn't have to work over on special projects. None of that. Pretty much everything we talked about so far is a lie, according to what you're saying. Unfortunately, um, unfortunately, yes. Why this? To, in my opinion, this was done uh, simply because I left. I said enough is enough. But why left. so long? But why so long though? Because you left a long time ago. It wasn't like it was yesterday. You'd have to ask her. Um, when I left. The situation, it ain't no secret. I said to people before, um, I called friends of mine, friends back home, back in California, talked to both my brothers or they're not my brothers, but we're just going to say Miguel and Elgin. But I talked to them um, because they were my confident confidants. Another friend of mine, um, we talked. Another buddy of mine, Omar, we talked. And it was just the consensus was that I couldn't do it anymore. I, I call her cheating. It just, it was too much. I had talked to the guy's wife. Um, she had caught them. Um, she showed me video of them two in the house together. Um, everything, uh, her, if she was ever wrong, anything. She kept talking about a work phone and all this stuff. And I'm like, I, I gotta have two phones for work because I'm not gonna, it's just, just my job. The nature of my job, I had to have two phones. Simple as that. Um, she had a password to both of them. It is very hard to comprehend. Did you just catch that lie? Oh. Did y'all just catch that lie? Now, oh, he said she had the password to both of them. And he also when he said, was telling the story, he said they were not allowed to put a password on, on their phones. But when he was talking, I told Nick, I said, it's crazy because Tisa said that she unlocked it with a password. So if she was able to unlock his work phone with, with his password, password that it means it been his homeboy meaning phone. it was his phone. Ooh. So which one is it? Could you have a password or couldn't you? 
Yeah, like that's how come I don't see how he tricked her. Maybe she just wasn't asking enough questions, or maybe like he would talk in circles so much she'll just be like, yeah, it's like because I th that's how I was. I zoned <coughs> out. He had said that I heard password, but I had already zoned out. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Some people they can't like me. I'm the type of person. You ain't finna like loop circles around me with no fucking lie. I'ma listen to it and then I'ma call your ass out on it. As a matter of fact, Nick was playing with me the other day and I and she called herself and I said, I said, boo, I said, why you gotta do that though? I said, why you just can't, you know, admit what you did? She said, I was just playing. She said, I was trying to see if you was gonna call me out on it and you did. I said, yes, cause like I'm not that girl. <laughs> that everything is a lie. Like there has to be something that's true. Still July, 2021. I finished going through the book bag. Um, there were some other folders with papers in there. He had left the work phone. What I actually found out was that it was not a work phone. It was simply a secondary personal phone. He told me it was a work phone. I thought that the company was paying for the work phone. But I found receipts where he it was a prepaid phone and he's paying to add minutes to it. So it's just receipts of, you know, you, you added minutes to the phone on this date. You added minutes on that date. Uh, work phone, whole thing, that was a bold-faced lie. Obviously, it was a lie because, as we now know, he was a forklift loader. Were you ever, like, a forklift driver? That's what, you know, somebody was mentioning. The charity work that I used to do. Oh, Lord. I got a forklift license. Because the charity work used to do, they load the trucks and they send them to disaster areas. They feed the homeless. So I learned to drive a forklift doing that kind of work. And then I got a license. I got a license to do it. I even got a license to train other people to do it. But that was charity work. That's me doing charity work, me feeding homeless, me helping people out. And I just want to do something. Yeah. So if people doing charity work, they help them get a license. Come on, bro. I'm a mom was that kind of person. <laughs> and for me, it just made me feel good. It wasn't about recognition. It just something made me feel good. You talking about the picture? You talking about a picture? Yeah, I'll, I'll be, that, it was a warehouse because they, they, they pack up food to give the, to, to give to disaster areas. So yeah, mm -hmm. you got a pair of hair in it. And that particular picture where I had it on my face, we were just playing around that day. Because I did see something uh, where somebody was mentioned they, they worked with you uh, as a forklift driver and that you said, hey, you know, I don't even have to be here. I'm basically, I have enough money to where I don't need to work, but I'm just doing this to just have something to do. A lot of people, Teresa got roped in on this story and lie. Uh, unfortunately, this this started, I left her, she didn't contact me, and we went through a whole year, I ain't hear nothing from her. Divorce was final, everything. She got what she got out of it, which was, I gave, I left her with 10 grand. Uh, and she can do what she can do with her car. That was it. Clean break. We were done. Wasn't nothing, no fight, no argument, nothing. We, I told her I couldn't do it no more. Went down, got last month. I told her I'd be back for the rest of my stuff. Uh, and it was at her crib and that was it. I was done. It did not work for me. And instead of trying to make it work, I just said enough is enough. And I left. She agreed. We actually shook hands. She hugged me, told me, you know, take care of myself, um, stay in contact. And I honestly said to her, I'm not going to do that. Um, I told her to take care of herself. And I told her my best advice for her is please financially get yourself together. That's the last, that's the very last conversation we had. So get yourself together financially because I didn't mind taking care of you, but at some point the deal was you were going to step it up and you didn't do that. The cheating part, that was too much to deal with. If I would have still been married to her and I'm still paying bills today, I still would have been working with her to take care of that if it needed to be. Because when you got a wife, that's what you're supposed to do. But the cheating, then you go into the marriage council, you're not admitting anything. You're still trying to place the blame. You keep talking about this, talking about that. You're ignoring the real truth. Did I hide money from her? Yes, I did. So what's the what was the point of the marriage council then if you knew, hey, I'm done with you? I, I was trying to save the marriage, honestly. I was. I, I, 
I get like honestly, I guess I can say, hey, I I wanted to forgive her because I wanted it to work. But after you know, you don't want to admit to anything. You basically you're not wrong. You don't believe that you're ever wrong. It's not going to work. And once that happened, um, I left. That was it. My birthday was coming up. I just left. I took a trip. I came up north, saw some family, came back down, found a job, and was on my way back up. The paperwork was in. Then she went and filed on her own and got the divorce, which is fine, which is fine with me. Wait. So she filed. I, okay, let me see. If, let me see if he gonna ask the question that I was about to say. Yeah, I filed, but I didn't finish because I was in a car accident. Okay. When I was moving back up, when I was my last trip coming back up here, I was in a car accident. So I was in a hospital. Um, <laughs> this little talk. I went to someone's wedding. Went to a buddy of mine's wedding. I was in a, I was an accident. Um, I was uh, injured pretty badly, and I had to get a lot. We had to get four surgeries and learn to walk again and do all that. So that, but you weren't you weren't with her at the time. She wouldn't have like use that as an example to what you what you were talking about with your knee. She knew about me being in the hospital. I was in an accident because at the time on my medical paperwork, she was still listed as my wife. So they kept her in a loop until I told the doctor oh, okay. and the social worker that we were no longer married and they stopped contacting her. Family, he talked to his, he had his uh, sister, Shantae, who lived in Douglasville. Um, like I said, she was married with two kids. Apparently she was a nurse. So when I had my miscarriage, that was a sister that he was like, my sister will take you to the hospital. Like, that's what family does. I've been around him when he was on the phone with Shantae. Never heard her part of the conversation. He would be talking to his sister. That's what he said. That's what it sounded like too. We lived maybe 35, 40 minutes away from Douglasville. So there were plenty of times that he had invited me to go with him to his sister's house. The first time he invited me, I was like, no, nah, I ain't going because again, COVID and she's a nurse. Hell no. The second time he was like, yeah, she invited us, but I don't think we should go because COVID. The third time we ag I agreed to go. I was like, absolutely, I'll go meet your sister. Like, that'd be great. On our way to her house, to Douglasville to go see the sister. Um, apparently he got a phone call. The phone was always like on vibrate. He told me that something came up and so she's, she had to cancel the barbecue to get together, whatever. Um, and so I was just like, oh man, you know, okay. Well, hopefully we can go another time. Shante, is that a real person? Uh, she kind of like, she's not my sister, but I call her my sister. She's a good friend of mine. What about the two different socials? Did you have a different social that you put on the, the marriage license versus when you no. showed her the first time? They wouldn't give you a marriage license. You put a different social security number on there. They will find out about it and they would issue a warrant for your arrest the minute you do that. There was never no two different social security numbers, same old social security number. Never put two on there, none of that. So the social that was on the marriage license, for example, um, was probably one, two, three. What was on the background was four, five, six. So when I saw his social on my background, I immediately knew that was a different social than what I saw on the marriage license. Um, and when I compared, because I, f I had found a copy of the marriage license that we turned in because I had filled it out on the computer. So sure enough, the first three numbers were different. She mentioned that you had two different licenses, and one license was uh, to a cemetery. The address was to the cemetery. Nope. Same license. I still got that license now. Uh, same license, Douglasville. I, still, I, still, I haven't even changed my license up here. Yeah, I've actually processed doing that now. Still same license. Never had a different license. Only license I had other than that was the California license and that address. That's it. But was the cemetery story real that you drove her to the cemetery and, and, and explain anything never, about that? Never show her where my parents were buried because my parents both were cremated. The ashes are at my brother's house. They don't have a gravestone. Only my grandfather and grandmother did. So a few weeks later, we go out to eat at this restaurant in Atlanta. 
as we are leaving, he says to me, did I ever, did, did I ever show you where my grandmother is buried? This is the grandmother that passed away from COVID in 2020. And so he was like, let me, let me show you. So he drives us to the cemetery, which is not far from the restaurant. And he was like, you see the headstone, the headstone had, um, like a fam the family name on it. There were no dates on it. So it, it reminded me of just a headstone where it was probably multiple family members. And so he was like, my grandfather and my grandmother are buried there. I do recall him telling me when the grandmother died in 2020 that she wanted to be buried next to his grandfather. I've also verified that your grandmother actually died in 2008 and not in 2020 from COVID. I have no idea who that man is in my guest bedroom. So just to go back on that, when you said they're at your brother's house, so the brother that you were talking to, these are just like friends. These are friends that you call brothers, but your actual brother, you don't really speak to. Um, we speak here and there, but not enough, not really. When our parents died, uh, we all kind of went our separate ways because my parents really preached for us to be, you know, be a family. Um, but my parents, when they went their separate ways, my brothers... I guess we fell apart. I guess the best way I can put it to you. Um, not because any of us did anything to anybody. Uh, my brother, Chris, is a really good dude. Um, he been through a lot. Um, dude has been. Hold up. So is the brother's real name Chris? Or was Chris the name that she made she up. Gave, <clears throat> made up for him? She said, we're going to call him Chris. So he knows to call the brother the made up name Chris and he didn't watch the video? into war so i can imagine what that must be like well i can't imagine what that's been like for him and he went through some stuff he he went through a messed up divorce he's a dedicated father to his daughter and for a guy who you see your daughter every day and then not being able to see your daughter every day i don't know what that i don't know i can't imagine what that would be like for him and for him he just he made moves that he wanted to make and um he's my big brother and I respect him and love him, so I had to respect him for it. He took his space for me and my brother, and I had to respect it. He's telling the family that I kicked him out. He's telling the family that I kicked him out after he walked in on me having an affair, that I stole his money, and I then kicked him out, and the man I was having an affair with, he said, was a law enforcement officer who used his duty weapon to threaten him to get out the house. This is what he told his family. And the cousin was reaching out to me. She found my, she found me through a search on Facebook and was reaching out to me because she's like, we know he lies. So I'm just trying to figure out what, like, is this true? Because he's up here asking us for money, asking to stay on our couches. Like what's, what's going on? Then she explained to me, we didn't even know he got married. So this is the first time we're hearing about you. What do you mean you didn't know he got married? How can you, I mean, you walked in, you see her cheating. Like, what, what could she place the blame on if that was the reason for y'all to be going because about this? afterwards, like I said, I said that I wanted to work it out because I did. But I'm, I, a lot of men don't tell this story and that's fine. I don't really want to tell it, but it's just at this point, you might as well. A lot of, like women say, oh, men cheat. I've been cheated on by a man and, and, they, and they demonize us for it. But when a woman cheats, she get, get, she get a pass. Uh, I ex-girlfriend did the same thing. And I left and your ex-wife. And I gave her a chance. And she cheated three times, three different guys. So well, I said, everything. What, what I'm saying is, life. what I'm saying is basically, if your reason you're saying, hey, look, I have the fact that I'm paying for everything. Um, you know, you're not moving up successfully in your career to where you can help me out, helping you out. And then I caught you cheating. What could be any reasoning that she has to say, well, I don't want to be with you? She wanted to work it out. She said, that's what she said. My problem was when the counseling got started. She denied that she did anything wrong. She told the first counselor that second one. She told the pastor, same different. She didn't do anything wrong. So I'm telling them, hey, y'all hear money from her. You know, I'm wrong. I'm wrong for this, you know, because I'm trying to make it work. But you sitting over here, you don't want to talk about the cheating with them. You don't want to bring that up. You don't want to talk about that. So you want to basically delete that you cheated and just say we here because he had money from me. And that was that. So and there's another lie. He said the first counselor they went to, 
The counselor said y'all both at fault because you cheated and you had money. Now he making it seem like she just did not want to bring up the fact that she cheated. That's true. That's true. Child. So what do you think the reason for the month? Like, what? why do you think that's such a big deal then? You know, if you were paying for everything and you're getting there in these situations, why was the hiding money thing? What, what was that? Like, greed on her part. That's all I can say. I don't know. Because at the end of the day, when I stopped paying for stuff, like, because the whole council thing, I stopped paying for stuff. You got to take care of your own bills, take care of my house. That was it. No more, no purses, no shoes, um, no shopping trips, no going out to dinner, no concerts, none of that. Legion would, Legion would talk about his, the niece, meaning Chris's daughter, and would send her stuff for her birthday. And he was like, I'm, he said, I'm almost positive my brother never sent anything for my daughter's birthday. And I explained to him, I said, isn't your daughter's name Egypt? He said, no, who the hell is Egypt? <laughs> and I said, I was told that was your daughter's name. That's the reason why I'm telling, I'm saying the name on here because obviously we're about to confirm that's not the daughter. So I said, I was told that's your daughter's name. I said, I, I went with him to Rack Room Shoes and bought shoes for what I was told was your daughter. Okay, so she had mentioned that you guys have, uh, you know, went to the post office and mailed off some kid shoes to a girl named Egypt. Um, friend, of, friend of mine's daughter. And we are close. She's a friend of mine. Um, v is a real good friend of mine. Her daughter is like my daughter. Uh, Egypt is a very good kid. And at the time, her mom was doing the best she could do. And she wanted to buy Egypt something. And for her birthday, I bought her a pair of Air Max because uh, I just felt like she deserved it. So and I was just doing why? something nice. And they were in St. Louis at the time. So the only way she could get them is if I mailed them to her. So I trusted Teresa. Just go, can you mail these off? for me. Um, she said, hey, I, I'll go by the FedEx place for you. Just give me the address information. I shot her address information and she mailed them all. She said that there was no trace that she had, uh, if I'm not mistaken, of Egypt. The, the young lady exists just fine. She graduated from high school this year. I'm not going to I'm not going to advertise her mom on online or talk about. I mean, she graduated from high school this year from Duluth High School. She she good kid. Um, Very smart young lady. Uh, and me and her mom are really. What high school did he say? Did he say she graduated from Douglas High School? He said Duluth. But I thought But she in St. Louis. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, are you gonna say cause I'm from St. Louis, you gonna say no Armady? Like what, what what high school she graduated from? I'm trying to think of Douglas or Duluth High School in uh But I thought he said they live in Duluth Roosevelt, like in what Georgia. So now the story's kinda like getting intertwined. <laughs> Good friends. Oh, we've been friends for a long time. Riverview like, St. Louis High School where the purpose of this appointment was to do an ultrasound to see if everything had passed. Everything did not pass. So because of that, my doctor was like, we're gonna have to do a DNC. My DNC was scheduled for the first week of July. Two days before my procedure, he tells me, he comes home and tells me that he is up for promotion to be promoted to VP. So he did not take me to the hospital um, for my DNC. My friend did. She could not stay because of COVID protocol. Um, so when they wheeled me into pre-op after I got checked in, I texted him and was just letting him know, hey, here's the update. I'm about to, you know, I'm in pre-op. And the response I got was from his new executive assistant named David. And he did tell me, I'm going to make sure that I inform David, if you get a text from this number, meaning from me, um, pull me out of the meeting. Because, you know, she's, my fiance is having um, a procedure done and I'm picking her up. So it's important that you come get me if it's something serious. Reminded me of a time where she said, uh, while she was getting her surgery, um, you were getting promoted from your, your original job. Was that correct? I was leaving that job. So you weren't getting promoted and David, the executive assistant, texted her? No, I was leaving that job. They knew I was leaving. Okay. Because she said, she was like, yeah, um, that was the day you, you said you... If you was leaving, why you couldn't be there for her? Right. Right. Let's just be real. If you was leaving, that would be even more reason for your ass not to be at work. Right. Oh, he getting on my nerves. <laughs> leaving that job. They knew I was leaving. Okay. Because she said, she was like, yeah, um, that was the day you, you said you were getting promoted. David um, had texted her, hey, hope everything went good. Um, so there is there's no David. No, I was leaving that job. I put in my... My notice, I was gone. I was leaving that company for another company. I was already leaving. Um, they offered me more money to stay. I said, no, I was done with Teresa. I was done with the job. I was done with Atlanta. Um, 
he did good. Oh. He did good. Oh, wait. So he said he wasn't even fucking with her then. He said I was done with Teresa. That's what he said. <sighs> to make Valentine, he went all out for Valentine's Day. He went all out for my birthday. The weekend after my birthday. And what I mean by that is if my birthday was on a Tuesday, we're talking about Saturday. Um, the weekend after my birthday, he gave me money to go to the nail salon, go get a manicure and pedicure. So I leave the house. I take his car. His car was in the driveway. We had a key to each other's car because, again, we're married at this point. I'm in the chair getting a pedicure, and I get a text message from my husband saying, someone was just at the house looking for you. And I'm like, who was looking for me? What do you, well, who was it? She did admit to me that when she was pregnant, that was the other gentleman's kid, not mine. Because we had not, while the pandemic was going on, then like he was the guy coming over. He was the guy showing up because the pandemic, like for five and a half, almost six months, I didn't physically see her. So when the doctor said, hey, you, you know, you five and a half weeks pregnant. So hold up. So he's saying that for, I didn't say that in the doctor's office. for five or six months, he just meeting her, didn't even physically see her and he was paying her rent and all her, her other bills. He made me want to hit him in his spoon. Babe, mouth when I too. tell you, babe, <laughs> when I tell you, like, this motherfucker, he made me want to hit him in his mouth, too. He like, really do. Oh. But I gripped her hand because, again, we had not been together. We had not physically spent any time together. And we talked about it in the car. But you paying her rent? And she tried to, to throw it in my face that that's not what happened. You don't remember all this other stuff. And at that point, I got suspicious, and then it led up to where we are. With the so, whole sir. But, but but okay, so when you were suspicious, that didn't lead you to try to leave. You just stayed with her just because. Well, like I said, she tells the story that I lived there. No, I had my own place. I would go there on the weekends, or she come up to mine on the weekend. So it wasn't that. It just that. Hold up, hold up. He said that she would come up to his place on the weekends. Yeah. But she wasn't seeing her for the fucking six months. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. This nigga getting on my nerves. She would come up to see you on the weekends. But you ain't seen it in the first six months. <laughs> Physically. And who stays with somebody, especially if you ain't been seeing them and they up and be pregnant by somebody else? Babe, please. <laughs> Other than what the doctor said, I wanted to find out more. Because you getting divorced with somebody, what what's the grounds? Um, you can have irreconcilable differences if I'm not mistaken. But at the time, the best way, the best way I put it, I was still, I guess, a fool because I still wanted it to work. Mm -hmm. well, okay, with the car backing in the driveway and you stepping out on the porch and stuff like that, uh, do you remember uh, her? Oh, that was him. That? that was him. Yeah. So that was him. He backed into the driveway. He didn't think I was there. He didn't mm -hmm. think I was there. And he backed into the driveway. She was upstairs. I went downstairs. I opened the door, and he quickly got back in the car, and he sat there for a minute. But I thought the story Tessa told was that they had a conversation. Yeah. Um, I thought about going to tap on the window, then I didn't. Then I, I I decided to go and tap on the window, and he just drove off. That was the same, because she said that was her, uh, she had mentioned she had an ex-boyfriend. That wasn't the ex-boyfriend. You're saying that was a mis or, um, a lady's husband. Yeah, that was him. That wasn't the ex-boyfriend. The ex-boyfriend reached out to me like while we were together, because I guess he was living, or he would come there. He was living in Milwaukee, and he asked, he came one day, she was at work. I was, I happened to be at the house, and he was like, look, I'm here. And we had a I let him in and we had a conversation like two gentlemen and he was like, man, I'm here because she told me she had my Xbox and mm. some stuff from me. And I was like, bro, I don't know. And we I literally me and went upstairs. We looked around, you know, all through the house and I called her and she jokingly said, you know, tell that MF I sold that SHIT. I, I took it to the pawn shop, F him. Mm. And he was upset and, you know, he was wanting to call the cops and do all this other stuff. And I'm like, well, that's between you and her. Um, I talked to her about it when she got home. She she laughed. She thought it was a joke. Um, she laughed about it. She said they broke up. I, I don't know. She said she said he cheated on her. He say um, he just walked out of a relationship because he got tired of her. Um, at the end of the day, because who she worked, she was secretary for law enforcement. Who have a conversation like that if they just come in to pick something up? Who started talking about their relationship with the new dude? What man have a conversation with the ex about their current girlfriend? What man? What man does that? Enforcement. Sure. I just took it upon myself. I called him up because we exchanged numbers and I just, I replaced the Xbox. I decided to look up his mother's obituary. Look up the mother's obituary. 
and um, down at the bottom where it talks about, oh, she's preceded in death by, and it lists all the people, the family members that died before. It lists Legion, the, the brother in Philly, and his wife and daughter, her granddaughter. It lists Legion and his wife, I think it was like Latoya, with Legion and the same woman's name that was in the obituary. Um, in that divorce record, it looks like he's the one that filed for divorce. This would have been around 2016. This was after the mother's death. Both had a temporary protection order against each other. He had one against her. She had one against him. Another thing I had seen was uh, Tashawn. I think he had came out and said, you know, same thing happened to his family. You told him you were a big time producer and you played in the NFL for all this time. Promised them the same type, type of stuff. Nope. Um, dated his mom for a couple of years. Honestly, and I'm not trying to bad mouth her, but the truth is the truth. Okay. Um, she was on drugs. Um, oh. he's on he was on drugs. I think he probably he might still be. Um, he has another brother that I still stay in contact with. Um, I stopped dealing with her because my mom couldn't stand her. Um, stopped talking to her because my mom couldn't stand her. My dad didn't like her. Um, my brothers did not like her. Sister didn't like her. Nobody liked her. Um, her people don't like her. Um, uh, her, her dad's alcoholic. Um. One time, I think it was an incident. As a matter of fact, he said something out of the way to her, had her crying uh, at my house, and I put him out, asked him to leave. Um, I actually drove him to the bus station, put him on the bus back where he was going. Um, Toya has a drug issue. Um, simply, I think, if I'm not mistaken, her story simply goes, her mother and her didn't have a great relationship. Her dad moved on. She had kids, one after another, after another, after another. Um, when I met her, we talked. She seemed cool. She had a when I found out about the drug problem, we were done. Her son, I met him. I actually went on vacation with her before we went up to where her family's from in Rhode Island. I drove up. Um, I had a good time because her uncle, good dude, her aunt, really good lady. Um, her sister, really, really good people. Um, her brother and them, real, real cool, really nice people. Um, Latoya, she's got a drug problem. It, it's simple as that. Um, when I found out about the drug problem, like I said, we were dating, we we're talking. Tayshawn, he got a drug problem. His dad, a good dude. Um, and she should have left him with her, his dad. She didn't. Um, he got in a lot of trouble and moved in with her and they started having problems. Uh, he was going to school down South. He started acting up, you know, um, there's one time he got accused of raping a girl. Um, I had to get involved, help prove that he didn't do that. And then he started messing with another girl and he just had problems and problems. And my suggestion that he go back and live with his dad, his dad had a plan for him and his dad really good dude. Um, and his dad, had him on the right path, but he knew he didn't want to follow that path. So he came move with his mom and he can cut up and do whatever he's doing now. I think now I, I haven't seen him since I stopped talking to her. And then I know somebody said that, you know, he out there homeless now. So I see she making videos now talking about, again, I simply stopped talking to her because my mom couldn't stand her. Uh, my brothers, the two that I told you about, they couldn't stand her. And she had a drug problem. I got another friend of mine who brought that to the light. And he came to me and Shantae is another person who brought it to me. And she got a drug problem. It's bad. And she'd been to rehab a couple of times. She got bipolar too. This stuff she didn't tell me when I found out. I did try to help her. It didn't work. And I just simply, once again, I just left. I, I, breakups for me, if it's not working, I tell you I'm done. I don't do no arguing. And I just leave. So, it, but do you all leave on bad terms? Or how does how do you leave? Because why are these uh, people coming and saying all these things that are so negative? So you hasn't said nothing to me since I left, since we left. Because I left her, she ain't said nothing to me. Ain't heard nothing from her. I heard she got married to some other dude. She used to talk to me all the time. After we had a mutual, we, we broke up. She married some other dude. She called me, talked about Tayshawn. Her daughter that went to California, I'm the one that sent her. I'm the one that sent her. When I was leaving, not dealing with her no more, her daughter expressed to me that she used to live with an aunt at one point. Me and the aunt became, we're, we're, were good friends. And I reached out to, to her, Carla, and said, hey, you think you can take in Joselle? She said, yeah. They, they came, they was on vacation. And they rented a car and drove down, picked her up, and that was that. Um, and I left her, and we were done. She came one time when I was up. I came back up north uh, to visit. She came up, visited, trying to rekindle something. Um, I traveled to Rhode Island to see her when she was living there. She was in and out of rehab, Sorry. and it was just nothing. Can't, I can't fix it. You're using drugs. You're doing all this. If it's all the same to you, I'm going to go my way. You're going to go your way. It's not going to work. And that was it. I didn't hear anything else from her. Every once in a while, she reached out to me because one of her sons I still talk to, all the time. I, I make sure he good because um, I met his father and he a good dude. Um, God rest his soul. So he called me, let me know how he doing. I check on him. He check on me. That's it. I, I ain't hear nothing from Toya until she got on the video. Part 28 is the phone call that I had with the, the ex-wife. I am the wife 
of Legion. Silence. And she said to me, and I quote, if you are calling me, then I know it's bad. And I said, I understand that you and my husband talk and communicate. Um, and she was, and she immediately said, what? No, we don't. She said, one thing you need to know about Legion. She said, whatever he tells you, it is a lie. And before we got off the phone, I said to her, I said, if everything is a lie, I said, I have one question for you. And she said, sure. I said, how is your daughter? I said, how is your daughter? She said, what did he say about my daughter? I wasn't gonna tell that woman that he said her daughter passed away. What about the $2,000 uh, you, you asked to take out uh, for the stepdaughter? She said that she had talked to the mom, supposedly for like a funeral cost. And Never happened, lies. Okay. You think that was just a part of the story or like, what, why would somebody lie about that? You gotta ask her <laughs> again. I don't, why do people lie? I have no idea. Like I said, I don't know why, where that came from, where that went left, I don't know. So later on, Legion calls me. He calls me because he wants some money. He, want, he just needs a little bit of money to hold him over until payback. Again, I was recording all my calls at the time. He was still he was still standing by the lies he told me. So finally, I just asked him, and this is where I, I let me just say it. I asked him, why the hell did you even marry me? Like, why? Why did you even marry me? Because you easily could have just stayed dating or been the boyfriend or just moved on, moved on with your life. Like, you didn't have to marry me. You didn't have to pull me in into a marriage and make me think that this is what you wanted. This is what he said to me on that phone call. He said, I had to marry you. And I was like, no, you didn't. He said, yes, I did. He said, I knew full well from day one that there was no way you were gonna stay my girlfriend for longer than a year. He said, I knew it. He said, I knew in order to keep you, I was gonna have to marry you. Y'all, my jaw hit the ground. I think money came into play. I don't think it's her issue. I think it's for three years, the first year I didn't hear that from her for the next two, it was reaching out to me on fake Facebook pages, on fake Instagram pages, WhatsApp or whatever way she could contact me to, she would tell people she's looking for me to see if I'm okay. But then she contacted me and it's, you know, um, I, I want us to fix things. I want to get back together. I want to start over. And I was just like, no, um, I don't want to fix stuff. Mm -hmm. And at that point, the last conversation we had was about a month before Valentine's Day. She called me up. Um, she made a fake Facebook page, called me up. Um, and uh, she reached out to me and we talked for about 20 minutes. And she says to me, you know, I want to, I want to, I want to work stuff out. I really want to fix stuff. And I want to pay you the money back that you spent. And I want to show you, you know, I can be a better person. She said that um, she had not been with nobody since we, we, we parted ways. Um, she said that uh, she just wanted to, wanted to fix stuff. And I, I calmly had a conversation. I said, I'm, I'm with somebody else. First off, uh, I'm in love. Um, and the situation I'm in now, I'm in a good place. Mm -hmm. I don't fight with my girlfriend. I don't argue. Um, getting out of the hospital, learning to walk again. Um, she has been instrumental in helping me with everything. Learning to walk again is hell. Um, to learn to walk again, I mean, we talking about somebody who understood this situation that I was in, knew about Teresa because we thought I told her everything. Uh, told her about the ex before that, told her everything, accepted me, um, helped me get everything together. Um, and we, we've we been great. Uh, she understood the limitations of walking again because I'm you know, walking again, like I can walk just fine now. But at the time we first started, I would take breaks, sit down, uh, get up, take breaks, you know, again, uh, taking steroids to, to help build muscle. Now to get back on a diet again to lose weight because, you know, you're taking a steroid, obviously, you're hungry, you're going to eat more, you know, changing health plan again. And she's been instrumental in all of that. Mm -hmm. She knows the Teresa story that every we talked about because I don't, I don't get a relationship and tell somebody. Not tell him something. I told her everything, and she made a choice to accept that Ew, and say, "Hey, I'm gonna put these up and fight with you." She watched these videos right along with me. Yeah, and, like I'm not. She don't, I'm not gonna put her on camera. <laughs> now she watched the videos with you, and that you say you claim you didn't watch the video. <laughs> See what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. Like people can say, "Oh, y'all bias or whatever," but you can just see his lies and his shit not lining up. Mm -hmm. At least with Risa, Teresa, whatever the fuck her name is, her shit was in order and it lined up. It wasn't like we were able to kind of call her out on her bullshit right while she was telling the story. This dude right here, he lying in our face. He playing in all of our faces right now. Yeah, for this two hours and thirty nine minutes. Yes. <laughs> Remember what she's sitting right here now. She we, we we dealt with all this together as a team. Knowing that I got an ex-woman attacking me, another one attacking me, and another one just talking trash, and we only went on three dates. And they making videos, they making money off my name again. She could have said, I'm making money off I'm my done. name. Honey. She didn't do that. Did y'all talk about this prior to, to the videos or yeah, we 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 talked about this before Teresa ever did anything. I told her the truth. Everything. We talked about the money, we talked about 
Teresa. We talked about Toya. We I, the, we talked about all this. I told her everything, as I always do. Anybody I'm dealing with, I did. I, I told, did, I, did I miss anything when I was telling? So she was prepared for all this. She knew she knew about Teresa. She knew about why I left her. All that it was it was like what our first or second conversation we ever had with each other. I wonder. What well, yeah. So I remember because I remember. I, like I told you, I said I don't want you to. I don't want you to get slapped in the face or or and, and like we talked about it. And you was like, that's the past, and that's it. Matter of fact, did you look me up? She literally ran a background check on me because her sister, you know, ties with the FBI. She ran a background check to make sure I was legit before I could before I could go out with her. So and, and and then she came back, okay, you good. And that was that. And we've been good. Um Pull on camera. The attack, like the one thing I'll say my girlfriend had to deal with um is like somebody at maybe you know, maybe somebody at a job or something like that. But they know me. So it's not the same. And then some people at our job don't, but you would think with all this going, all this negative stuff where I live, I'll be getting a bunch of handshakes saying, hey, man, keep your head up. There's some BS. My niece is school. Hey, there's some BS. Daughter school is some BS. It's it's all, everybody said the same thing. Everybody know me. Oh, it's some BS. I got a bunch of encouragement calls and everybody who called me. Like, I got some people from high school that believe the bull crap. And that's fine. But I had more people who went to college and high school or people who know me now, personal friends, family members call me. Hey, I know this BS. Keep your head up. Um, I even got the weird calls. There's some women hit me up talking about, hey, we can be together. You can pay my bills. Take care of me. Damn her. And, and my girlfriend think that's funny because I'm I, I told her that that was crazy. Like we I had a girl like I, we were sitting here and a girl got on the phone and was like, you know, you can take care of me. I'll be your side chick. And I'm like, really? And, and it ain't funny because it's sad that that motivates people. But I don't know. All I can say about this whole situation, if I had to go through all these bad women to get to this good one. I don't know. She mentioned that she asked you just kind of like it was like y'all were having closure, I believe. Um, and. She asked, why did you lie? And you said, you know, I had to lie because I knew we wouldn't make it. Never asked me that. And I never told her that. The last conversation we had with each other. Um, actually, no, that's not the last conversation. The last conversation I had with her was last year when she asked me to, she wanted to start over. And I told her no. But the conversation she talked about, the closure conversation, yeah, we met for coffee, Starbucks. Um, and we talked. And she asked me, could I ever forgive her for the cheating? Um, I told her, I, maybe I could have. But you drug it out so long with all the counselors that at that point I stopped loving you. So at that point, I'm not going to work it out. Once I stopped loving her, that's when it was time for me to, that's when I decided to leave. All the opportunities before that for us to work it out with the cheating and stuff like that, that was her opportunity. I felt like she missed the opportunity. There was, my heart wasn't in anymore and I was done. The house fell through in October, 2020. And what I told him was, I said, I don't want to look at another house. I don't want to talk about cars. I want to get through the holidays um, because it was going to be a holiday season where I could not celebrate my family because of COVID. So I said, I just want to get through the holidays. I want to get through the end of the year um, and we'll revisit stuff in January. I was very calm when I said it. No argument, nothing like that. Um, and he said he understood. I just... A lot of what fueled me staying in this situation really was the fact that number one, I didn't want to be alone. Number two, I didn't want to look stupid um, by having the relationship end so quickly for everyone to be like, we told you something was up. Um, and number three, I was ready to get married. And that, what ready to get married fueled a lot of stuff. She had this question as well. Uh, did she feel like it was ever love? And she said, no. So do you feel like it was ever love? Did you ever love her during that time? Absolutely. Through the whole thing until the day I found out she was cheating. You said that you left. So the so basically you sleeping in the car and everything after you moved out, that was not a real thing? No. I went uh, home. I just, I went to Douglas, I went home. Okay. So the, the behavioral, um, I think she said you went to a behavioral correction uh, hospital or something like that. That wasn't, that wasn't true? Lies. Okay. The only thing I did at a behavioral hospital, um, I knew a guy that went there and I helped oh, him get a job. A he got out. Um, he knew a friend of a friend of mine. Omar, he asked me for a job. I got him a job. And I, I picked, matter of fact, no, I did. I picked him up from there. He got out of like a, a like a mental like facility or whatever. I dropped him off at his mom's house a week later. Um, he asked me, did I have a line on a job? I did. Um, I said, you got to go and show up every day. I gave him a ride to work for a week. Um, and his mom bought him a car and he's been working ever since. So did you ever send a screenshot to Scott the Realtor with $68 million in the account? <clears throat> no. If I had $68 million in my account, <laughs> I would just go buy the house. I wouldn't need a realtor. My realtor that I've dealt with for years is Tori Lampton. I don't, Scott, I never met. 
um, the people that she kept introducing me to were people who, when she called them, asked them about a house and we go look at the house. And it's always a different realtor. None of those were friends of mine. The only realtor I've dealt with from 97 on is Tori Lampkin. That's it. And she never met Teresa. And she, you said he never met Teresa? Uh, Tori has never met Teresa. Not one day. As far as the condiment company for six years. Lies. I got offered a different job. I'm doing the same thing, different company. And I was leaving. Um, oh, and the only reason they didn't promote me, honestly, simply because the fact is they liked me in that position doing that particular job. And I wanted to move up. Um, I was older. So I just, I wanted to step up. So at the end of the day, when I got the new job offer, um, it was back north anyway. It was um, what I wanted to be doing. Um, and it was at the money that I wanted to be making. And things weren't working with her. I was already on my way out the door with her. So I was just like, all right, I'm going to take it. Start off with a fresh start. Um, and then be closer to family. And try to rebuild some of the relationships that maybe over the years I hadn't talked to people because and stuff like that. So my mom lives in Arkansas. And when she came to visit in April, this is, we were already married. This is her first time physically meeting Legion. My mom will tell you, she had no idea anything was amiss but there was something that nagged her a little bit. She didn't know what it was. And my mom is the type where she's gonna get on her knees in prayer. That's who she is. So for her, it was like, I don't know what it is. He seems like a nice guy. He seems to love my daughter. Um, there, Cause again, there was no arguing in the house. The house was peaceful while she was here. Even though behind the scenes, we had just came off of the whole sexting incident with other women. Explain the relationship you had with her dad, because I don't think she ever discussed anything about her dad. She and her mother told me a story that he didn't want anything to do with her. And he told her mom it wasn't his baby or whatnot. I met him because he called the house one day. She was at work. I was working on this day. And we just got into a conversation. And for some reason, something he something what he said to me about her, about wanting a relationship with her resonated with me. When I spoke to her about it, she was like, you know, he ain't this, he ain't that. Where her mom said, had a conversation with her mom, her mom said the same thing. Um, a couple of weeks went by and he called back and we exchanged numbers and we started talking. Um, and he really was trying to find a way to be part of her life. And I would bring it up, she'd get testy and I'd leave it alone and maybe try to bring it up again. Through all that, me and him developed a relationship um, because okay. he was a dad trying to, be there for his daughter even though she grown he was trying to you know he told me that a lot of stuff that her mom said about him was a lie um and he wanted to be part of her life but he you know she wasn't having it so he would call me every once in a while how you know how my daughter doing and i say you know she's doing good you know we're fine you know give him an update you know hey we just did this we went on vacation here we did this the third she happy and he would just you know keep her happy and that was it I, only time honestly what i would say when she was unhappy when her mom came around they got some kind of weird relationship. I still don't quite understand it. Her mom would come around and those two with butt heads or her mom call on the phone. As far as me and Teresa was concerned, before all this happened, I thought we were good all the time. Her mom came and stayed like a week and she did nothing in a week. Stayed in the room all day. Um, I'm not, and I'm not trying to bad mouth her mom or anything like that. It's just that she didn't do anything that week, but stay in the house and do nothing. Okay. All week, she watched TV all week long, basically. Legion never loved me. He never loved me. He doesn't love himself. So I know he didn't love me. Number two, he didn't even like me. He watched me get excited about things that he knew I was not going to get. How was the ring presented when you gave her the ring? Mm, I came home and just gave it to her. It wasn't no flowers, cards, candy thing. Like we already talked about getting married like it was more like a business deal, which it wasn't. I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying that's kind of we just talked about it and decided we wanted to do it. Went out and got a ring, came home, like, here you go. Was that an Amazon ring? No. She actually, when we, we went our separate ways, she gave that back to me. My advice to anybody who watched the 53, 56, whatever part series it is. Um, my advice to any of the women out there, honestly, um, I'm not that kind of guy that she said I was, but I'm going to say this to any woman and men. Um, I don't want to get preachy or nothing, but I, in the Bible, it tells you about unequally yoked. Anything to any man or any woman, please don't date somebody that financially not on the same level with you. Um, if, if they not, and you want to date them, I understand that they not. And if, and if you want to help them, help them, but don't, don't just, don't just do nothing. And you date them and, oh, she broke, I got money and that's it. No, if you care about somebody, 
you build them up, you put bricks and you build together. Like older folks say, you build together and you build with them and you teach them. I did try to do that, but you try to do that. But if it's somebody and you you out here, you 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 you, you doing your thing, you making money, you ain't living check to check, and the girl you date is check to check, and you try to help, and they don't they don't take the lessons of hey, this is how you can increase your financial part because money is a part of any relationship. I don't care what nobody say. I know somebody they married, they living in the projects, and they happy. They got three kids, welfare, but you can't tell them nothing. They happy. They got one car, one person ride the bus, one person take the car to work. Um, they got less than two thousand dollars in savings, but they happy. And ain't nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. The point is, for any my message to any man, if you're dealing with a woman, because they're gonna tell you, hey, you know, can you pay my bills to take care? If you start doing that, don't make that a lifetime thing. That's my mistake because I did that, and what end up happening is you start taking care of somebody who don't appreciate it, and then you end up with a Reese Tisa. Like a shut up. Um. <laughs> I did everything I thought I was supposed to do as a man. I did what my father did to my mom. My father took care of all the bills in the house. My father's a truck driver before that, he was a police officer. He took care of everything in the house. We never had to worry about it. Now, we ain't have a whole bunch of money growing up, but everybody in my household, when you graduate from high school, you got a car. You, you, you was, when you graduated and you put the cap and gown on, you was pulling up to your graduation. My first, my first car was a Cadillac, a Fleetwood Cadillac. Like my father, was right on his car, touched the class. And, and and he didn't have a lot of money, but he made sure we was good. I didn't grow up with a single parent. I grew up with both my parents. Uh, my mom worked hard. She was a nurse and she, she gave that up and became a teacher. Uh, my father was a cop and he became a truck driver. Uh, no, we didn't have a whole lot of money um, because back then they didn't believe in those professions to pay black people a lot of money. So my dad decided to drive a truck because he wanted to make more money and he took care of us and we was good. I mean, my dad used to let us get out of school or not go to school until late that day so we could be the first person to step into high school with the new Jays. Like, no, we ain't have a lot of money, but my dad knew when the new joints come out, he come in the room, Jays come out on Tuesday. Y'all want them? And me and my brother would not, we'd go to school late and go get them new Jays and then go to school. You felt like you just was doing what you were supposed to do and what you, what you was taught as a kid. I would do what my father taught me. Chris wanted me to also let you all know that their parents, though they are passed away, the parents did everything they could to get Legion psychiatric help. At one point, they were taking him to different therapists and psychologists. He's been diagnosed as a kid with both bipolar and schizophrenia. I did not know this. Chris informed me today, Monday, February 26th, during that phone call, that their father came out of retirement to help pay for the medications. And as Legion got older, he refused to take them. Never, never happened. My parents, uh, my dad was from Roanoke, Virginia. My mom... I uh, was born in our town, PA. Um, big family um, on her side. Um, my dad was raised by his grandma, but my mom, big family. And they're very, they were, they're tight knit. Uh, and my grandma, she kept everybody together. You know, you come over there, my grandma come over there and beat you. You act up, you don't need your parents. She show up, Nana show up and, and mess you up. You don't have to worry about your parents. Um, and they all got along. But as we got older, um, my mom and dad decided they wanted to make a move and they moved to Georgia. Um, and for us, the sons, we were not happy um, about it. Um, I don't think me or my brothers were happy about going to Georgia. My older brother embraced it, though. You know, he, he you know, I think he could function anywhere. He type person can live anywhere. Um, the but, question was about his medication, if he was on medication. Because I'm like, I, That's what I'm saying. I don't give a fuck about this shit. <laughs> me and my brother, Mike, we wasn't, we wasn't fans of it. And my brother did a lot to help us. It's like this almost seemed like that's what the liars do. Once you expose the liar, finally somebody give them the attention and they listen to them. And then they take that opportunity to tell their life story. We don't give a fuck about your life story. We just want to hear about these lies that Risa Teresa accused you of. That's it. I don't want this to be an opportunity for you to talk about the other shit. Who cares? Nigga. You know, kind of like naturate to the whole living in Georgia thing. Uh... I can be honest and say I probably never liked it. Too funny. Uh, but, you know, my parents were there. Uh, nobody, none of my brothers, none of us had no mental issues. My mom, that's not true. My parents were a team. They were old school with it. Um, anybody who know when your mom say something, you know, you don't got, she don't got to say go ask your dad because he was already on the same page with her. Um, they got along very well. Um, we didn't have a whole lot, but we had enough. What they um, got to do dad. with your mental illness? Who cares? Yeah was active in all our lives. Uh, my mom was too. My mom did a lot of volunteer work. Um, and we grew up really good. My grandma was in the house with us. My great grandma actually. So 
we had great family figures, I want to say. And then I found that as I got older, the reason my parents moved from up north is because the fact is some of my family members they had a lot of infighting. You know, my great grandma passed away on my mom's side and everybody stopped getting along. And my mom just didn't want to have any parts of it. Um, and she felt like starting over down south was a good idea. And it was, honestly. We got a better education. Um, we moved to an area where there wasn't any crime, really. Um, a tighter community. And um, honestly, all of us got a better education down there. My older brother joined the Air Force. Me and my brother uh, went off to school. Um, high school, I went to. Everybody went to high school at the school. Like, they just had that, I don't know, that Southern hospitality thing where it just, you just felt like you was, like you lived there forever. Like, I got nothing bad to say about anybody went to high school because anybody went to middle school, yeah, elementary. Yeah. But they were just all good people. Like, they just, we just had fun. And um, my like I said, my parents, there was nobody in our house that had a mental age, nothing like that. My older brother, nobody. He went on to the Air Force. He came back uh, after the Air Force. Um, he went through a few problems, you know, he's been to war, obviously. Um, but he was still my big brother, you know. Uh, if we needed something, you call him up and be like, yo, I need some advice. And he gave it to you. He'd show up. Matter of fact, he probably wouldn't talk to you on the phone. He'd just pull up and be like, what you, what you need, little bro? And he talked to you. He went through a divorce. He had a daughter. He went through a divorce. Um, I don't, I can't, I'm not going to say until you, I know everything that went on through him and his ex-wife. They just went, they separate ways. She became like a sister to us, like a big sister to us. So I still got a relationship with her. Um, and he got a daughter, obviously. Um, his ex-wife, man, incredible person. She became a big sister. She helped take care of my mom. My mom got sick. My dad got sick. Grandma, um, instantly good part of the, became part of our family. I still consider her family to this day. Um, man, incredible person. Um, my brother, honestly, they got divorced. Um, I, I don't. I can't say. I don't know what happened. All I know is he he was. He went their separate ways, and he went on about his life. She went on about her life. After a while, he stayed down south. And Georgia, and then he finally just said, and he can't, he went back up north. I didn't talk to him. I didn't talk to him for some years. And that was his choice, not mine. Um, like previously, I told you, Elgin and, and Miguel, you know, took me in as like a little brother and they've been there. I didn't talk to him. I tried to reach out to him over the years. Um, after about two, two, three years, I just stopped. You know, I let him do his thing. Um, I knew he was good because his family, he was around. And they said he was good. And I left it at that. I mean, a couple of days ago when all this video stuff happened, he called me. You know, talking about the Reese's Thesis stuff, and I was just like, bro, you have no idea what was going on there. So, um, but as far as argument, no, last the last physical conversation we had, other than the other day when he called me, the last time I saw him, we were great. I mean, honestly, the last physical conversation we had, other than that, it, it was probably almost like nine years. You know, people talk about a bunch of different. Uh but didn't he say uh, early in the show, he actually you talked to your brother, and he said, we talk on and off. Mm -hmm. On and off is not, I ain't talked to him in nine, nine. years. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, TikTok accounts and stuff like that. So I was seeing a bunch of different videos about, um, you know, just pictures of like, you know, the offshore account, videos of like being at like the Netflix headquarters and you know, stuff like that. Do you ever, do you have a TikTok account? And you know, how valid are those videos and pictures? Um, I ain't never been to Netflix day in my life. I don't even know where their home is. Um, The only thing I've done even close to anything with TikTok is my old job. We leased some property Oh, to them Lord. for a movie that they were original Netflix movie. And my boss made me go with them and stay with the property until they were done. I had to stay there. I wasn't on set. I wasn't, I was in a trailer enjoying the food. And as soon as they were done with our, our property, we were done. I was it. I ain't touched nothing. I ain't do it. I sat in a trailer. Actually, I played PlayStation <laughs> for most of the time. And then when they were done, Ugh, you know, we loaded up and I was done. I was gone. So that video was just like an old video. Yeah, it's very old. Okay. It's before Teresa. Like. Good boy. Let me see. At work, taking a break. I just thought I'd come to you today. You know, it's day like 16 of filming, not to mention working. So the good thing is, the next couple of days we're off from filming, so I can take a break. I can just go to work and come home and relax. Netflix working on a deal, no movie or nothing like that. Not my. What about the offshore account pictures? I don't know where they get that from because I don't have it. I don't know where they get that from. That's still more lies. And this is for anybody, women, men, in general. This is young people, old people, anybody that watches this video. What you can take from this situation is, what is happening? mentally, if you're healthy, your life is good, you you come to peace with whatever demon you may carry, or you don't have none, That's, that could be happy. True, too. Um, People who are broken, and when you realize they're broken, realize that you don't have the tools to fix them. And you can't fix them. You can point them to get some help, but you're not a psychiatrist. You're not any of that, and you can't help them. So that's not somebody no, we can't help you should be in a relationship with. That means is if you date guys, if you dating a girl and she's mad at a baby daddy, they don't talk. They can't build. They, they don't. They've had a kid together. Now they don't talk. She got to have a child support. She at him all the time, and you just the guy there. 
I'm going to say, and I'm sorry, lady, but gentlemen, that's not the woman you need to be dating because adults have to learn that everything is not their way. If you got a kid and you're dealing with somebody and let's say me and my girlfriend, we had a kid and we ain't together no more. We're going to have to be friends on a level because we have a child together. We have a life that we're responsible for. But when you got one person attacking the other person, I want child support. I want this. I want that. I want this. I want that. And you constantly add them. They're not healed from that. They're not healed from that. My father, my mom had a son before she met my dad, vice versa. And they were cool on that end. You see? So what? when you try to make that work with someone, I'm not saying you can't date them, but I'm saying you got to watch yourself because they're not healed from that. So he just said his mama had a child before she met his daddy. He said that? That's what he just said. Oh, okay. The baby daddy moved on and you have, you at him, but you want to be my girlfriend and everything good over here, but you're not healed. She's broken well, he and you got to understand that. There's only so far you can go with that. Know, when you push through all that, you see what I'm saying? I told my own girlfriend one time, I can love you beyond the BS if you let me. What that means basically is you got to put that down. You got to let that go. We've all been done wrong. I've been done wrong. I've been cheated on. Uh, move on. I can't carry that into the relationship I'm in now. I can't carry Teresa into this relationship. I can't carry what Nisha did. I can't carry what Latoya got going on Nisha. into this. So if you want to get in a relationship, heal first from whatever you've been through so you don't have to take the other person through it. <clears throat> because even when you, you're leaving the relationship, because all I did was leave. I said enough is enough. And for three years went by. And that's the number one question everybody asks me. Why'd she wait three years if you were so horrible? Again, her life, I, from what I hear, her life fell apart. It just fell apart. Nothing went good for her. I don't know if she had a boyfriend in three years. I don't know. I was just told from people I know when her life fell apart. Um, she ain't been happy. And now it, this is what she wanted to do. She heard, well, oh, he living good. He out here making money still. He out here doing great. Got it going on I'm going to attack. It's, it's the bitter <clears throat> effect. And it's not just women that do this. So don't think, ladies, that I'm attacking y'all. Because men do it too. Men do it too. You get with a girl, you, you you give her the world, and then you leave because you go mess with the next chick, and now she's the bee on the corner that you can't stand. And now all of a sudden she can't get child support because, oh, I ain't going to pay child support after that. No, you, you were there. You loved her at one point. You laid with her at one point. Take care of your kids. But so it's on both parts. All I'm saying is mental space is, is important. Date somebody in the same mental space as you. My mistake in life is dating people who are not. I grew up in a household with two parents. Um, they loved each other every day. My parents did not fight. They did not argue. If they did, we ain't see it. My mama was the person who'd be like, did you talk to your dad? Go ask your dad. And he'd give you the same answer she gave you. And he in another part of the house and he hadn't talked to her. He just know what she said. So for me, creating a healthy relationship with somebody, yeah, you should be on the up and up. Don't do what I did because the one thing I didn't do to create a healthy relationship on my side is I didn't talk about the money. I kept money from her, from advice from people. It wasn't the best advice. Yeah, if we want to say I did something wrong, yeah, I did not tell my wife how much money I was making, worth none of that. I didn't tell her um, because financially she wasn't where she needed to be. But that's not an excuse. I'm really, I'm wrong for that, period. I apologize to her. And everybody else, any man, please, if you want to, if that's your girlfriend, you don't, you don't owe her that. I'm going to say that as my personal belief. If that's your girlfriend, you don't owe her that. But the minute you say, I do, yeah, your finances are her finances. And you need to tell her, you don't need to keep money from her. I did that, and that was a mistake on my part. That's me. I'm not, I can cop to my wrongdoing, and that's it. I should have told Teresa in the beginning what was going on, gave her a budget, and said, this is where we're going to be at. And this is what we're going to do, whoopie whoop, and do it from there. And the two gentlemen that are my brothers that, you know, they're not my brothers, but they are, they told me, that's where you're wrong. You should have just, you know, to this day, they still say, you know, that's what you effed up, right? You know, because you should have. But that's my advice to anybody. If it's your girlfriend, and it's just, you don't got to believe, like I said, you don't got to listen to me. It's your girlfriend. You don't owe her that. If you're moving in with her, I still say you don't owe her that, in my opinion. But when you get married, yeah, you do. Every dollar you make is her business. Every dollar she makes is your business. And I made a mistake by not doing it. And that's wrong on my part. Not my proudest moment, not proud of it. And I don't have no problem admitting that. If you watch the Risa Tisa stuff, if you ever hear it, she she tells you she's the victim. Um, she was victimized from the beginning. She didn't tell you how she used to jump up and get mad, cuss her mom out. Um, when they because they got a horrible relationship. She didn't tell you that her mom lied lied to her about what her dad is. I talked to her dad now. Um, I still we're friends. As a matter of fact, when I got into a relationship again, I told him that our relationship as friends we had to back away because I'm with somebody else. I'm not your daughter, not with your daughter anymore. But he's a good dude. Her mom, I'm gonna be honest. I don't know if I can say that because I don't think her mom did what she needed to do. And they don't have a great relationship because when her mom used to come to visit, it wasn't good. Her aunt. And her have a good relationship. Her cousin Maddie, they I think they're good. Although I did watch her, you know, go through some things. But again, her family is it's up and down. I just don't think that she was ready for what we were trying to do. Um, the videos, am I mad about them? Yes and no. The re my girlfriend mad at me woman in the back because it put her through something. Um, for me, I just I thought it was funny at first until family members started getting attacked, until friends started getting attacked. Like what woman in People her right mind? Why do I keep doing that? What woman in her right mind? sit back and watch mm -hmm. all those 50 parts and still be able to just like be by his side like that well the same way Risa did 
It's like no, I'm talking about she watched Risa tell the whole story, like from beginning to end. Because he told her a story before that, so she's already in a relationship with him. She believed him the same way how all of these other women believed him. Because when he comes, I guess he tell a story that's good enough for them. I don't know. We're like, let me get up here and do a video and tell you, tell your side for me. Let me go up here and go. And I, I have held everybody back from saying something because what's it going to solve? They're not. And I, my main thing I would say, they're not attacking you all. They're attacking me. Um, and I do want to say to the young lady who put my face up there and you did all that. You, I understand that you did that for clout. You did that for likes. And I do know that Teresa put you up to that. She probably not going to tell y'all, but she did. Teresa put her up to that. I Teresa know. said, I can't say his name, but you can. <clears throat> and then she caught all this flat for it. And I feel bad for her because I think that you did it for likes and, you know, to make your money on TikTok. And I, I'm going to tell you, young lady, Teresa used you because she did use you. Um, all my friends, I apologize to whoever had to deal with the foolishness. Um, because I know all y'all live y'all life kind of like I live mine. We all like to sit back and we, we ain't none of us trying to be famous. So for you who had to deal with it, I apologize to the gentleman's house. They defaced and all that. I, I apologize again. I talked to him before, so we talked. Um, the other gentleman, I apologize oh, to the person I sold the house to down in Atlanta. I apologize for them swinging by your house. I think it's the right thing for you to do with the new alarm system and knowing what you did with the fence. I really do hope they stopped doing that. I think they did because he went and you know, did a few things for you people who sent Teresa money. Uh, y'all cash after her. I don't know what y'all going to do. I can't do nothing for y'all. So I had a lot of people ask me, oh, I want money back. Uh, you gave it to her. Reach out to her, not me. Um, TikTok. From what I understand, so TikTok foolish. was like, they gave her the money for the views. <laughs> so she got paid off y'all clicking and watching. So you want to stop her from getting paid because y'all exposing her now? Just stop watching. Stop watching Reese's T-shirt. That's the only thing I can tell you. Because other than that, you're going to get paid every time you click and watch. Um, and anyone who sent her personal gifts, I don't know what y'all going to do. I can't. Don't reach out to me I and mean, say. If anybody sent her personal gifts, nine times out of ten, they did it out of the kindness of their heart. Yeah, they ain't expecting him. nothing back or nothing. That's just him feeling some type Why of way. Why you feel some type of way because she getting all this attention, attention and she making more money than you not, nigga. She on Good Morning America. I tell she you, on her other... background look better than this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, where the fuck are you at? Mr. Nine... Uh, no. He probably at his new girlfriend house. That's what I'm saying. He probably at her house. I want money back. You sent it to Teresa? Talk to her. Um, To the exes before her, Latoya... So I'm not going to look at me and think I'm trying to be funny, but I'm not. But sounds like to me, you still need to get that help that you were trying to get back then. Um, I don't think you got it. Um, I know about her daughter and that situation. You need to get help. Um, not for your sake, for your children's sake. Um, Nisha, I, I saw you do a video and I, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I walked away from you because you just, you want it. And we just agreed to disagree. And that was it. I left her. Uh, and you that was it. It was, it, was, it was no drama between me and her. She liked to get loud, jump up in my face, and I left. Again, I'm a black man. I'm not about to be swinging as on women. That's what I do. I'm like 6'6". Six, six. I'm not going to be out here because when the cops pull up, they're going to look at me and be like, I got police officers in my family. And I'm not a violent person. Never have been. Um, <laughs> and those are the exes that I guess are bitter. I got ex-girlfriends who reached out to me that was like, hey, I'm sorry you're going through that. You know, because every relationship I've ever been in, I can't say when it was done, whether they were done with me or done with them, we had a mutual parting of ways. It was never no violence, never no screaming, hollering or nothing. But these women are the women that I left because I said to myself, this don't work for me no more. So I got nothing against them still. I don't care what they say or what America or the internet say. I don't got nothing against Teresa. Um, I left. Tell the truth. Um, Toya, get some help and take care of your kids. Like, your son should not be homeless. Tayshawn, I feel bad for you, my guy. Um, I don't know what you need to get your life together. But whatever it is, do it. Matter of fact, my best advice is call your dad. Call your dad. and Because I know his dad still loves him to death. Tayshawn's dad is a really, really, really good dude. I'll go so far as say he's a better man than me. Because he's been through some things and that dude don't quit when it comes to being a dad. Um, and I learned some stuff from his dad um, about being a father myself. So his dad is a really, really good dude. And I don't think Toya is a bad person. I just think that she needs to get some help. I don't think Teresa is a bad person. I think Teresa needs to get some help. I don't think that Nisha is a bad person. I think that she needs to get some help. What about you? You don't Nisha's need no help. They're good people. Her sister, good people. Honey. Nobody. Everybody need help but him. That's why he done sat on here and told everybody issue, but I ain't said shit about himself. He don't have no issue. He is definitely a walking red flag. He did. I'm talking about Latoya's family. They're not bad people. They're good people. Nisha's family, good people. Teresa's family, from the ones that I've met, they're good people. Um, I, I've gotten to sit down and talk to her dad. Good, good dude. Um, uh, her mom, I can't say that I had a really good relationship with her, but I don't have anything bad to say about her either. 
I just didn't, I didn't get a chance to get to know her. And maybe that might be more on my part because I kind of didn't want to get to know her because she was in Kentucky, wherever. And when she came to visit, she, she kind of didn't talk though. to me. So. No, this the, the other. Age. I would like for my family to be left alone. <clears throat> um, my brothers, leave them alone. That's all my family. Leave them alone. Um, stop, stop trying to use my name to make me sound like some demon because I'm not. Anybody who knows me closely, they will tell you <laughs> that dude that they talk about. That's a lie. That's not him. Stop calling Shut me. Up. Reaching out to me, trying to jump on my Facebook page. Because, I mean, I have not gotten a lot of hate. I've gotten a lot of girls like, ooh, I'll be your side chick. I'll be this, I'll be that. I'm not interested. I'm not interested. I'm happy where I'm at. Um, honestly, if, if me and my girlfriend are working, I'm still happy where I'm at. Um, my nieces, nephews, kids involved, I leave them alone. I'm asking you to. I don't care about no, this lie about a Tubi movie. I've actually spoken to representatives. Ain't no Tubi movie. Ain't no Netflix movie. Ain't no Tyler Perry movie. None of that. Um, leave, my, leave people I love alone. Leave my friends and my family, leave them alone. Period. It's, just leave them alone. It's it's a lie. If you want to believe it, you go ahead and do that. But please leave the people I love and I trust alone. You want to keep coming at me after this? Go ahead. It's a lie. I'm not going to answer because I'll probably delete the Facebook page once I invite everybody over to the new page. They are, they are my friends. Um, the phone calls in the middle of the night, they, they, it'd be nice if they stop. It probably won't, but it'd be nice if they stop. I did this interview today with you because you're a legitimate person. I turned down like five or six interviews with other people because they weren't going to do nothing but spin it anyway. I don't have anything against Teresa. And this is what you had to do to get money. That's sad. Uh, Toya, if you had to do this for money, that's sad. Same with anybody else. That's sad. Um, oh, the one lady who said that, there's a, one more thing, I'm sorry. There's a lady who's on TikTok, I don't know her name. She said that, she made a comment that she said that I didn't, if I was a CEO, which I was never, um, she said that, I, that most men like me look for eye candy and they, they went and attacked her, ripped her apart and she had to do another part and they still trying to go at her. Um, Ma'am, I know you were trying to help <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not mad at what you said, but I don't, I don't think I'm not candy, and I, I don't. I date someone for their heart. Number one, um, two. You said you probably you guessed that she was lying. Okay, but you didn't help me by attacking Teresa. You, I know you thought you were, but you didn't. You didn't help me by doing that. Um, you want to help me? Y'all write her and get her some help. You want to help me? You gotta help her. I don't need help. I'm fine. How they gonna write? Not a narcissist. I'm wrong way help. more than I'm right, and I'm okay with that because my other half is right, and that's good enough for me. Um. <laughs> mm -hmm. The people I didn't name, you know, because I ain't we gonna talk about my kid. We gonna talk about none of that because that's not y'all business, and it's not gonna be the kids in my family are gonna have to deal with this. Um, my niece that had to move from Atlanta. Oh, y'all be careful about what y'all watch online and what y'all believe. At the end of the day, legion, demon, narcissist, none of these things are who I am, and everybody that know me know better. The people who don't like what I'm saying to you today, let that be your problem. Because while this was going on, I know some of y'all thought that my life was gonna be made hell, and that I wasn't gonna live my life. I have been out this house every day since that has gone on, and I've gotten nothing but love, respect. How you doing? Keep your head up. Move forward. But if you want to continue to try to make money and demonize me, go ahead if you want to. Uh, I am not the arguing type of person. I'm not going to be. At 45, I am a grown man. Uh, my situation is good. I love my family. All of them. You the ones that don't like me too much, I love them all because they're my family. Um, I love my brothers to death. Being one of my brothers, obviously we don't talk that, but I still love them to death. Uh, he had a big part of teaching me how to be a man, so I'll never hate him for it. My nieces and nephews love y'all. And I apologize if y'all had to go through anything um, because of me. It not necessarily was because of me, but it's my ex-wife, so I take blame for that. Um, and they really don't, like, directly to the ladies mention... Just running around... I don't know why I keep doing this. He really don't directly mention his twin like that. Mm -mm. Like, he directly mentioned his <clears throat> older brother, but he it, it may be something there with him and his twin. It's probably good his twin away from him. Hell, he might hurt him. Hell. Yeah. Try to I'm saying whatever, not just Teresa or anybody else or Latoya. Y'all, get some help. Get some help, find you some happiness. And you won't have time to go out and make up crap or be on TikTok. I've obviously found that happiness. And I'm but really, really good. Even with this situation, interview. I'm still good. I will say this much for it. Because I don't want to forget this. And I said in the beginning, I was going to say something about this. Young people. um, 18 to 30. I'm just going to make it wide enough. When you get in a relationship with anybody... And I'm not bad about Facebook or anything else. Look at some famous people and their relationships stay pretty good because they don't put everything, they keep they keep their business private. That's um, not true. You got somebody you care about, keep them private. I told my girlfriend, don't tag me or nothing with her kids, don't do nothing. And I'm glad I did that because they didn't come under attack. You know what I mean? Um, I think her something was said to one of the kids, but they didn't they didn't go nowhere. But because not because of this situation can happen, but just because Oh, best believe somebody finna find this girlfriend. 
They finna find her and all her stanky side for business too. We wanna see how who is the dum dum that's sitting next to your big ass. Co sign. Yeah. Keep your love life private. Um, everybody don't even know what you got going on. The people that know you, they do. Social media can be the devil, as you can see. So don't let them in your business. <clears throat> I learned that a long time ago. I mean, other than that, love each other every day, man. Don't you break up, walk away, clean. If you with the person, you with them. Love them. That's it. No fancy stuff. Put everything on the table. Uh, everything I said, if you need to rewatch this video, watch it again. I do have a page where it's called Real Talk. We talk about relationship stuff all the time, simply because if I can help you, I can help you. If this situation will teach somebody. I know Teresa said, hey, if this story will help one person, I don't think her story, I don't know that she meant that, but I will tell you if this can help you in your relationship with young men, women, older women don't matter, then I'm cool with it. I want to say this. I've seen like, because I got calls from TMZ, I got calls from ABC. Like I think she's there recording something on the Tamron Hall show for her or whatever. And I told them, hey, you can't use my face because like I'm getting sick and tired of picking up my computer and somebody saying, you know, well, I blocked a lot of people. I blocked a lot of people. Um, and I don't want to hear it. And I had to tell a representative from the Tamron Hall show with my legal counsel, hey, you can't use my face. I ain't giving you permission to use my face. You can't use it. Um, and I think what they talk, they even talk about on The Breakfast Club, which is a show that I actually like to listen to and watch. Uh, I like Charlamagne, God, uh, DJ Envy. Uh, they got Just Hilarious on there now. Well, I always think it's funny as all get out. And I think he said something like he made a really, I guess it was a, to me it was a rough joke. He called her like a big back or something like that. Bro, no, shut up, cause he you're called y'all big backs. <laughs> or whatever, and that to me, I, I got no problem with Charlamagne. I don't. I just for me, I ain't know whether to laugh at it or feel bad, because you know, I mean, in the day, like my sister, I would say, hey, she put herself out there for whatever they're gonna do to her. But the sad part about it, like I said, it's so many people invested in in the lie. That's all I can say. I can't even say call the story. I just so many people invested in the lie. Um. And it's people who got defrauded, and I feel bad for them. I mean, my family, I've got a chance to sit down and talk to my family members, um, and they all know, so I'm pretty good. The people who I'm estranged from, they're people that I didn't deal with since I was a little kid because my mom chose to move away, and then we just didn't deal with them. Uh, my brother that she talks oh. to, I got no ill will against Make him. He just, um, actually, I can't clean it up, sorry. Uh, he may be in it for the money, too, for all I know. Money ruins people at the end of the day. Mm. Pretty much. I mean, I hope everybody can get past it. I mean, I didn't do things she said, but I mean, some people, this video going to air and some people still going to say he lying. Some people going to say, hey, you lying. You might even catch some flack for They might say, oh, you lying. How you give him time to talk? He this, he that. No, I don't believe it. And that's fine too. But what I want to urge everybody, women, men, everybody, if there's been people that got on TikTok and everywhere else and told the story before, Facebook, YouTube, Maury Porvis, Povich Show, Terry Hall, wherever, they've told their story. Not once, and I'm just asking people to do your research. It's not once did somebody say, they put the cash up and say, help me. Not once. Um, and there's people who need to help. So I'm pay attention to who you helping. Because everybody ain't telling you the truth. If, if you, anybody want to demonize me, go ahead. That's fine. The people who know me, they know the truth. Um, other than the crazy chicks that's been in my inbox talking about, oh, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be a side chick. You can pay all my bills. Um, my girlfriend don't believe it. Her family don't. They know better. She know better. My friends are close to me. They know me. They know better. Um, people I work with, they all know better. People who are close to me. Everybody know me know better. So that's what counts to me. Um, my girlfriend's older sister, extensive background, federal agent. I wouldn't be sitting here. She wouldn't let me talk to her sister if, if or even be close if, if I was this person. Um, so if people want to demonize me, I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, I would appreciate it if you stop going after my family. I would appreciate it if you stop because for me, it's just getting old. But I mean, people, some people you are not going to stop. They're going to keep on. They're going to believe it. They're going to keep going. And I'm okay with that too. If that's what you got to do. You're going to make me public enemy number one. And you're going to make me the demon person. Because of a bunch of lies, that's fine, too. Somebody got to do it. Um, to the exes that are making videos, I said something earlier. I'm going to say it again. I walked away from all of y'all for the same, some of the same reason I walked away from Teresa. That's just, that's the facts. I walked away from Latoya. My mom didn't like her. Dad didn't like her. And at one point, it just got to the point where they were done. Um, and it was it. Her son, he should, like I said before, cause, he should call his dad. Because um, his dad loved him to death. And he definitely can help him. He should call his dad. Um, and as far as Teresa's concerned, uh, I feel bad for her. But I mean, this is what you have to do. Perfect. Get some help. That's all I can really say. But I'm not going to stop living my life. I'm happy with who I'm with. I'm happy in my relationship. I'm happy in my life. Honestly, this is nothing but like a little stopping point to have to deal with this. And after this, honestly, I'm probably not doing interviews talking to nobody because I don't, I don't need to. You don't believe me? I'm okay with that. You do believe me? I'm okay with that too. But this, um, like for me, she did all this after she found that I was involved with somebody. As long as she was heard through the grapevine or whoever she's talking to, some of the people in my family who I don't deal with too funny for whatever the reason, or I just haven't seen them. Once they found out I had a girlfriend, 
that's when it started. That's when these videos start. Just if, if I was miserable somewhere, sitting in a wheelchair still, not living life, she'd have been perfectly fine. There would be no Risa Tisa, period. So it's because you moved on? Pretty much. Okay. I mean, this was, my, my girlfriend watched the videos, some of them, and looked at me and was like, well, I don't know who they talking about. Her sister, they actually looked me up. Like, they did a background check to see what kind of person I was. They looked me up and they were like, okay. And they told me, like, straight up, like, no. <laughs> and they think that's not who you are, so there it is. I'm always a person I say all the time, and she get on to me. I say, I'm, I'm wrong probably 90% of the day. <laughs> a narcissistic ain't going to tell you that they're wrong. I make mistakes all day, every day, and that's fine with me. My girlfriend, honestly, she's going to kick me because she see this, but she's much, much smarter than me. Um, so, and it's not it's not like I'm saying like, I'm stupid. I'm not saying it. I'm just saying she's she has a way of looking at things that make a lot of stuff easier. I wouldn't be able to do this situation, this interview, talk to anybody, stand up for myself. Like, I, I was going to leave it alone. I was going to let them say whatever they want to say. They don't know me. The people around me know me is one thing. But once you started attacking certain friends of mine, family members, they get an inbox on Facebook, people's kids getting harassed, you know, nieces and all this nephew dealing with people at college and all this. So for me, then it, that was the thing. And then I saw these women with the cash app. When the girl told the story about sending her Teresa this money, <laughs> and, and then she found out later it was BS. She blocked her because she had spoken to her. She blocked this girl um, on everything. And this girl's out three grand. And when I spoke to her, like I said, she didn't ask me for the money back to be paid. Back. She just asked me, you should say something at this point. Because I watched, I seen a lot of it. And I just didn't say anything. She said, you should say something at this point because I'm not the only person to cash at her. So the girl reached out to you saying, hey, I cashed at her 3000 But what made her come up with the conclusion that she made a mistake? Like she saw fake. the post where the lady posted the video about it was her story. And then she went and read the woman's story and watched her videos. And she realized it's the same story. The lady was telling her. She reached out to this lady and the lady told her, yes, it's fraud. And then she reached out to me because they had put my face out there. And there were so many messages. And I guess by chance, I sent her a message back like, hey, I don't know what's going on. This ain't me. And then she told me I sent her three grand. And I immediately called her and we had a two-hour conversation. And she was upset. And when she said she watched the videos and then talking to me, she said, I don't I don't think you're the person that they're talking about. And I said, when well, they're using my face and she's saying that's me and she made a bunch of stories, that's not me. Um, I felt so bad for that young lady that I I, I wasn't going to send her $3,000. I'm not going to sit here and say, I'll send her $3,000. But I did send her $1,000. Because she got defrauded, she had kids, um, and I can't help everybody. So that's why my girlfriend was like, well, you can't go out here and start paying money back to Dana Gates Teresa. Best thing for you to do now is say something about it. So at least that she don't get to defraud these women. If everybody want to believe I'm a demon or I'm legion or whatever, I, I don't really care. That's fine with me. Stop sending her money because she lied to you. You don't have to believe me, but don't send her money. Because people go online and tell the story, but they don't ask you for money. You see what I'm saying? Like, somebody's been done wrong and I ask you for money. Tina Turner got beat up by Ike Turner. She didn't ask the fans to give her some money, did she? Um, I mean, and, and the list goes on and on. I mean, if Joe Jackson beat the Jacksons, the Jacksons didn't call you and say, hey, I know you listen to my records, but can you send me some money? Because Joe beat me. So I'm, I'm saying, like, that is where, for me, I said, okay, if you don't pay attention, that's where you can see the fraud. If she was just telling the story, she would just told the story, and that's it. She's making money off of this, and that's what that was her goal. I'm going to destroy him because he's happy, he good, and I'm going to make some money off of this because that's what she about. Gotcha. So taking money from all those women and all those women who sent her money, I feel bad because you got defrauded, and that's wrong. Um, Anybody who's told a story didn't come in here and say, you know, money. And like I say, I didn't know about the cash app until the lady told me, the young lady told me. And when I saw, that's what made me start watching the videos. I didn't care of the lies, but I started watching and seeing the cash app pop up. And I was like, oh my God. And then a lawyer buddy of mine said, they're sending her money. Hmm. And that was the part for me I felt bad because I said, again, that these women, they're getting taken for a ride. And it's easy for Americans to believe, a black man, we get players, we dogs. You know, we got the Stevie J's of the world and whoever else you want to add in there to do stuff like this. So again, it wasn't hard for everybody to believe. But like I said, my main reason, like I originally told you, leave my family alone. Uh, and, and for the people who send her money, I feel bad. <clears throat> All right, final thoughts. Um, <laughs> it felt like we just sat there and just listened to someone with a mental illness just speak. And it seemed like he can go for hours and mm -hmm. hours and hours and just like lie with a straight face. Um, if you start trying to pin him in the corner and start trying to like pick up on some of his lies, he can wiggle his way out real good, and real fast. Another story. You can tell he's been doing it for a long time, but you still can tell that he's lying. Mm -hmm. Um, if you let him talk long enough, you will pick up on the lie. And most liars like that, which we're starting to see, you let them talk long enough, they'll they'll tell out themselves, they like yeah. they say. Yeah, but um, this is what y'all wanted us to react to. Um, comment below your thoughts. Uh, I hope we're done with this by now because I'm kind of over the whole story now. Um, and um, thanks for tuning in. We appreciate y'all. We'll catch y'all next time. Peace. Peace. You don't really need a lot of
know what it is, you know what it should be like. You never needed their approval, don't be validated. You live it in your truth, only when you feel it, that's why I'm tuning into your vibration.